we will go ahead and call this meeting of the Marin Local Agency Formation Commission to order our regular uh, regular meeting Thursday, February 10th, 2022 at 7.02 p.m. Olivia, will you please call the roll? Uh, before I call roll, I'll introduce process and then I'll call roll. Um, okay. But yes, I, I will do that gladly. Um, so my screen is shared. People should be able to see the teleconference process and I will also read it aloud. So for audio, all microphones are muted. Once identified, staff will give commissioners the ability to mute and unmute their own microphones during the meeting. Staff will unmute other microphones as needed during public comment, then remute once the comment time has ended. For a recording, this meeting is being recorded. All comments made during the meeting are public record. For public comment, members of the public can make comment when called upon by using the raise hand function during public comment on the item for which they wish to speak. For those who join by phone, dialing star nine serves as a raise hand function. Public comment will be limited to two minutes. Any further comment can be submitted to the commission by mail or email. Finally, for technical issues, if you have any technical issues, you can call staff at 415-448-5877 or email them at staff at marinlafco.org and we will do our best to monitor our phones and email. The staff member will attempt to help you resolve the issue. So with that all being said, now I can call roll or will call roll. And so we'll start off with Chair McEntee. Here. Vice Chair Caius. Here. Commissioner Arnold is absent, I believe. Commissioner Rodoni. Here. Commissioner Kohler. Here. Commissioner Murray. Still absent. Commissioner Loader. Here. And then alternate Commissioner Connolly is absent, I believe. Um, alternate Commissioner Campbell is going to be absent tonight. I received communication in advance. Alternate Commissioner Moody. Here. And alternate Commissioner Savell is also absent. And Chair, we do have quorum. And just uh, Commissioner Moody, you are serving as a regular commissioner until uh, until Commissioner Murray arrives. I was just going to ask that. Thank you, Jason. Thank Very you, good. Jason. Thanks for catching that. Very good. We'll move on to agenda review. Would any member of the commission like to make any changes to the agenda? Would any member of the public like to make any changes to the agenda? We have no hands raised and no emails were received. Okay, so we'll close the public comment on that. Uh, would anyone like to make a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda for tonight. I'll second that. Olivia, will you call the roll, please? Of course. Commissioner Radoni. Aye. Commissioner Kohler. Aye. Commissioner Moody. Aye. Commissioner Loader. Aye. Vice Chair Caius. Aye. Chairman McEntee. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. We'll now move into public open time. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on the current agenda. All statements that require a response will be referred to staff for reply in writing or will be placed on the commission's agenda for consideration at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to, uh, I think we were going with, are we going with two minutes today? Two minutes. If there are any... For public open time, which is for items that are not on the agenda, if it's up for an item that is on the agenda, you can wait until we reach that item. Yes, Jason. Um, I was going to say, you're going to see um, Deputy Executive Officer Sibel, Sibel I'm sorry, uh, change his screen to a, to a timer. So those, when they're giving public comment, will can look to his uh, square for a uh, time. And we do have one hand raised, so I'll, let, I'll leave it to Olivia to deal with uh, the hands that are raised from the public. I just gave the public member with their hand raised the ability to unmute themselves. So you're welcome to unmute and and then deputy executive officer will start our timer. And after that, you'll have your two minutes to speak. And that's yeah, Francis Nunez state, is the one that's hands raised. Francis Nunez, yes. And if you could um, state your name for the record. That was for the public member to state I'm the name so, of the record. I'm sorry. Are you? I don't know what you mean. Was that is that for the public member? I am the public member, Francis. Uh, yes, we're, yes, uh, Francis. Is that is that you? Okay. Um, I just have a question. I submitted a a um, 
comment for I think it's agenda item seven CSA eighteen on Tuesday at morning, and I didn't see um, any at the comment on the in the packet. So I just want to confirm that the comment was received for the commissioners. Yes, a supplemental agenda item was released to the commissioners earlier this morning, and it was also posted on our meetings webpage as a supplemental agenda item for item seven. So you should be able to see it included in a packet with some other emails that we had received after releasing our packet last Friday. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does any other member of the public wish to address the commission on any item that is not currently on the agenda? There are no okay. other hands raised. And no, no further emails received? Yeah, correct. Okay, so, so seeing no further comment, we'll go ahead and close public open time and we're gonna move on to the consent calendar. The consent calendar are items that are considered to be ministerial and non-substantive, and they will be subject to a single motion approval unless any member of the commission or member of the public wishes to pull an item, and then we would, we would go and um, address that item separately. Would any member of the commission like to pull an item from the consent calendar? Okay, seeing none. Would any member of the public like to pull an item from the consent, consent calendar? If so, please raise your hand. Okay. There are no hands raised. And no and emails? And no emails received. Okay. So seeing none, would anyone like to make a motion to approve the consent calendar? I'll move that. Move consent. I'll second. Moving and seconded. Olivia, will you please call the roll? Of course. Commissioner Rodoni. Aye. Commissioner Kohler. Aye. Commissioner Moody. Aye. Commissioner Loader. Aye. Vice Chair Caius. Aye. Chairman McEntee. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much, Olivia. Now we're going to move to the first of our public hearing items. That would be item number four, approval of resolution 22-03, sphere of influence update and reorganization of the lands of Marin County Open Space District, including detachment from City of Mill Valley and annexation to the town of Corte Madera and Sanitary District number two. Jason, who's giving yes, the staff report? You. Um, yeah, and Olivia, if you can let in the, the uh, applicant or the, the representative into the into the uh, panel, that'd be great. Um, so what you have in front of us today- There's multiple representatives. Do you want me to have them all come in as panelists? Whoever is the main representative should come in. Okay, perfect. Um, so what you have in front of you today is an application to, for lack of a better term, clean up a very old issue. Um, there was a small, there has been a small encroachment from a parcel onto a neighboring open space district. Um, it was realized a while ago. This is actually one of the first applications I became aware of um, when I first started back in 2018, um, just to let you know how long we've been working on getting this one fixed and resolved. Um, the open space district and the property owner have come to terms where the property owner is going to swap land for other land that is more useful to the open space district than what this is. Basically what transpired is years ago before the current property owner ever owned this parcel, um, this encroachment was done and it was the parcel was for lack of a better term fully developed. It, it's where, for those of you that are music buffs, um, it's where, from what I understand, the helicopter that had um, Billy Graham in it was heading to before it crashed. Um, so this has been around for a very long time um, and has been used by this property for a very long time. It is completely fenced off um, from the rest of the open space. So what we're doing today, the, the, the reason why it's in front of us is the portion that was the that's open space district is actually part of Mill Valley, where the property that is actually attached to is in Corte Madera. So what we're looking to do is take this parcel, this, this parcel of land, which is about half an acre big, <coughs> take it from the uh, Mill Valley and move it to Corte Madera. So we need to both do, do all of the um, detachment annexation and change the spheres of influence for Mill Valley, for Corte Madera, as well as for Sanitary District 2, which is a um, dependent district of the town of uh, Corte Madera. So there's a lot of issues that are like all getting wrapped into this in order to make this occur. Um, Mill Valley and has already approved a tax exchange agreement and is in support of doing this land transfer. Corte Madera is 
from what I understand, next week going to be approving the uh, tax exchange agreement. So they have not had a chance to do the official approvals, which is why you will see that this item is conditioned on them doing that approval as well as uh, doing the pre-zoning. I have not gotten it. I tried to get an update, but did not get an update from Corte Madera today on the uh, status of the pre-zoning, but I understand that's still a couple of weeks away at least, but it should be completed before our April meeting, which is why we're asking for a condition of approval to be um, that they, that Corte Madera finishes its tax exchange agreement and its pre-zoning process. Once they do that, everything will be in place. Um, all agreements have been reached between the property owner and the open space district for exchange of lands. So the open space district is getting land that is much more valuable to, to the general public to be able to use. Um, so I think this is a win-win for everyone involved. And uh, we do have Craig Richardson, who's here representing the open space district. If you have any specific questions about what they're looking to do, they are technically and officially the applicant, although the property owner is also helping uh, fund and pay for the cost of this uh, application. So with that, I'll leave it open for any questions you might have. And if I if I could, Jason, thank you for that. If I could just provide one point of clarification. Yes. Um, uh, good evening, commissioners. I'm Craig Richardson, senior open space planner with the Marin County Open Space District. And I just wanted to clarify that we're actually uh, we are the the current owner is going to purchase the the that tiny bit of land from us and also provide us with a restoration payment that will be used towards um, fire fuel reduction efforts there in the Alta Bowl Preserve. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that clarification. Any questions from the commissioners? Okay. So seeing no seeing no questions from the commission, we will open the public hearing. And if there are any members of the public who would like to comment, please raise your hands. I currently see no hands raised and no emails were received. Okay, so seeing no member of the public that wishes to comment, we will go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for deliberation and or a motion. Any deliberate deliberative comments or questions? This has been this has been in the works for quite quite some time. Um, although it is a, a boundary change, it's just it's all part of this one property, and it sounds like everybody has worked it out. So anybody, no questions. Um, Okay, I'm go ahead, Barbara. To make a motion if you would like. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve the requested reorganization of the portion of APN 033-200-01 identified as the transfer area in Exhibit C and approve the attached resolution number 22-03 with the two conditions noted for approval. Rodoni, you'll second that. Moved by Commissioner Kohler, seconded by Commissioner Rodoni. Olivia, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Rodoni. Aye. Commissioner Kohler. Aye. Commissioner Moody. Aye. Commissioner Loader. Aye. Vice Chair Caius. Aye. Chairman McEntee. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, thank thank you. you, Mr. Richardson. I think we're we might be seeing you again later, or, or is that something else? I, that, that'll be someone else. But oh, that'll be someone else. But thank you, you very much for being here. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, we will move to our the next public hearing item, which is item number five, approval of resolution 22-04, request for outside sewer service from the city of Mill Valley for 11 Brighton Boulevard, Mill Valley. Jason, do you have the staff report? Yes, so this one is due to the fact that we have uh, the owner of 11 Brighton who needs to replace a septic tank with uh, and is close enough to the Mill Valley sewer system that they should be able to connect to it. Um, John, who is our the applicant has just been added in and, and can address some specific questions you may have. But from a big picture perspective, um, this parcel is actually, while it's right next to Mill Valley, it's quite a drive from Mill Valley. Um, they, they, their backyard and a backyard that is touches the uh, Mill Valley are right next to each other, but how you drive around is, is a very long drive. So there's no interest in Mill Valley in annexing this parcel in because it would create a, an island of one parcel that is far outside of its jurisdiction from a driving perspective. And so they're willing to do an out of service agreement. They've come to terms with the applicant to um, 
make sure that, that he's paying the proper amount uh, for sewer services, but it will not be annexed into Mill Valley um, in this process, which is why it's an out of service agreement, um, which is an acceptable situation based on uh, state government code that we can do these types of connections when there's not a direct need or desire to, to, to annex it in like this would occur. Um, happy to answer any questions. And of course the applicant is available if you have any questions for them as well, or if they have any comments, they're welcome to make them. I'll also add on a technicality that John is the agent of the applicant. The applicant is the city of Mill Valley based on um, government code for this type of OSA. The city has to be the applicant and signed the application, but John is their authorized agent. And he's the landowner. And he's the landowner. That's yes. right. Yeah. So I'll make that clarification that he is the landowner, but he's the agent of the application. Okay. Mr. Grabham, anything you'd like to add? Um, I, if you guys have any questions, I'm more than welcome to answer them. Other, otherwise, yeah, I think that sums it up. Thank you very much. And, and Jason, just to you know, clarify on the outside service agreements, I know that this is not something we, we like to do lightly. We'd like to you know, have, have things fit into a municipal service, fit into a municipality, but you've clarified that it's really on the basis of how you get to it. Um, so if you, I don't know if you want to make any further comment on uh, yeah, no, I, outside I, service I, agreements in general and, and, and under, yeah. Yeah, no, you are correct. Normally you would want to annex a, into a city if you're taking a city service. Um, this is one of those rare, there's, I always like to say, there's always an exception to the rule. This is definitely the exception to the rule. Folks want, I can pull up a map and show you, but at the end of the day, it really is just a very long drive to get to Mill Valley. Uh, for, or for Mill Valley to actually provide any services to this parcel other than sewer, because it would be a long drive for all of their vehicles. <clears throat> Commissioner Rodoni. Yeah, thank you, Chair McAdee. Um, Jason, just a couple quick questions. Does this uh, outside water agreement and extension of the main uh, allow anyone else in that area to connect to it? No, actually, right. this is, it's not water, it's sewer. Um, and the lateral yeah. will go across one person's parcel um, oh, which I should add, they are still working on the easement rights, but from what I understand, there is a general agreement and the lawyers are getting all the paperwork done. So there's a condition of approval on the easement as part of this application. Um, but you, there, the lateral goes across one person's parcel and goes directly into the main sewer line that's in the street on the other side of the yeah. property. So it's- so, Yeah, I understand it's a sewer extension. And the question is, is, would this allow other people by similar agreement to connect in? Um, I mean, if, if someone else, if you want, I can pull up the map, but there's a, a long line of property. There's a few properties that run Why along the Why don't you go ahead and pull side. up the map since there've been okay. a couple of... All right, so let me, give me one second here to do that. And this is a good question um, by Commissioner Rodoni because yeah. it, illustrates, it illustrates why this is an unusual circumstance and what we would normally want to see. Yeah, so it's hard to... Edgewood here, this is where the sewer line runs. It runs along mm -hmm. here. So this parcel's right here. So it's gonna go across, I believe it's this parcel here, which is also technically not part of Mill Valley. Although some point later this year, maybe next year, we're actually gonna be getting an application because they're looking to connect to the sewer line because they're also on septic. So they're gonna get actually annexed into the city. Um, but where they connect, where they drive to is on Brighton. So you're gonna go across this parcel here. Technically speaking, someone along here, here or here, would all, could go across a different parcel to get to Edgewood, but it's very limited to the number of people that are close enough to this Edgewood line. So theoretically, yes, there are other parcels eventually in the future that may want to get added to it, but it's a we would take those one off at a time and they would need to be, I think this, the county has a rule on septic tanks, If you have, and Commissioner Rodoni, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but I think it's 400 feet. Mm -hmm. So there's not very many people who can go across a parcel and still be 400 feet away. Um, Thank you, my Dennis, second. Dennis, you, you asked a good question that I also asked and checked into. Essentially, what you're wondering is if whatever is being done by this action would facilitate other properties up in Muir Woods Park that are on panoramic to then more easily connect into the sewer system. And I think what Jason's explaining is that it really doesn't do that. It really doesn't provide yep. an easier way for those other parcels that are on septic to connect into sewer. Thank you. And my second question, Jason, is <clears throat> with outside water services, there's a mechanism to restrict or cut off that service. 
it, has anyone thought about that? Is that possible in this outside water service? And what would be the results of that? Well, water service and wastewater are two different sections. I am, and since we have two wastewater board members, they might be able to know this better than I do. But I don't, it's a lot harder to disconnect someone from a wastewater system than it is from a water system. Because if, if you're disconnecting from wastewater, you're basically saying you have to go back to septic. And that's generally frowned upon. So I don't think that there is the same rules of disconnection for wastewater as there are for water. I know you used to be a water board member, which is why you're, you're focused on the water side. <clears throat> but the wastewater side has a different set of rules from what I understand. Absolutely true. Thank you. Great questions and comments from, from the commission. Any other questions? Seeing no questions from the commission, we will go ahead and open the public hearing on this item. Are there any members of the public that wish to be heard on this item? If so, please raise your hand at this time. I see no hands raised and no emails were received. Okay, so seeing no member of the publish, public that wishes to comment, we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for a deliberation or a motion. Make the motion to approve the uh, the change. I'll second it. I'm uh, by making by. motion to approve staff recommendation. Yes, approve the staff recommendation. Yes. Thank you. If I scroll Move. back up to the item. I can read the whole thing, but yes, option number one. Uh, moved by Vice Chair Kaya, seconded by Commissioner Mooney. Moody, uh, Olivia, will you please call the roll. Commissioner Rodoni. Aye. Commissioner Kohler. Aye. Commissioner Moody. Aye. Commissioner Loader. Aye. Vice Chair Caius. Aye. Chairman McEntee. Aye. The motion passes. Mala, just as a clarification, are you are you fine with um, uh, saying moving the staff recommendation or, or need we read the title or, or the? I'm fine and... with moving the staff okay. recommendation. Okay, good. All right, well, thank you very much. We will now move on to the next public hearing item, item number six, approval of resolution 22-05, annexation of 1203 Simmons Lane to Novato Sanitary District. Jason, will you give the staff to Olivia to take this one. Okay. Of course. So we received this application from a um, landowner in Novato. It is a parcel that is incorporated in Novato, so no issues with urban growth boundary. And they are just looking to move off of septic and connect into Novato Sanitary District. It's it's a Novato Sanitary District annexation that we've seen in a lot of meetings in the last ever so many months. Um, fairly straightforward parcel. It's just around an acre. And the Novato Sanitary District, as well as other agencies in the area, were all given the opportunity to comment, and all comments received back were either in favor or neutral. So staff recommends approving this application. It seems like a fairly straightforward um, and reasonable reason to be connecting into the Sanitary District. And since it's within the boundaries of the city of Novato, we don't have any urban growth boundary issues. No urban right. growth boundary issues. And the applicant is also here. They've been promoted to panelist and um, if they would like to speak, they're, of course, welcome to. Mr. Saragoza, would you like to say anything? You have the ability to unmute yourself now, Jose. Got it. So, no, yes, thanks for taking my application. And, um, you know, as she says, it's pretty straightforward. We have the sanitary district right at the edge of the property. So that's all. So, be nice. the islands, they, they do, they are, you know, um, adjacent to the sanitary district, so it wouldn't create a weird pocket or anything of that sort. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Are there any, uh, any questions from the commission on this item? Seeing none, we will go ahead and open the public hearing on this item. If, are there any members of the public that wish to comment? If so, please raise your hand at this time. I see one hand raised from the applicant, but I'm not. No, no, sorry. That was, Perfect. Uh, no, no, no worries at all. I just wanted to check in on that one because I saw it raised before Chairman McEntee opened public comment. I don't see any other hands raised and no emails received. Okay. So seeing no member of the public that wishes to comment, we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for deliberation or a motion.
I'm willing to move staff recommendation, approve the requested annexation of 1203 Simmons Lane and approve the attached resolution number 22-05. Thank you, Commissioner Rodoni. A second? A second. Seconded by Vice Chair Caius. Olivia, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Rodoni. Aye. Commissioner Kohler. Aye. Commissioner Moody. Aye. Commissioner Loader. Aye. Vice Chair Caius. Aye. Chairman McEntee. Aye. Motion passes. All right, moving right along. Thank you very much. We will now move to item number seven. Approval of resolution 22-06, approving a sphere of influence amendment and reorganization. Um, and I believe we're changing that. Uh, reorganization of county service area number 18, including detachment of uh, 2,753 parcels and divestiture of power to provide certain service with Marin County Open Space District. Jason, will you give the staff report, please? Yeah, this one's a little bit longer of a staff report, so please bear with me as I go through it. Um, as you may recall, those of you that were on the commission in 2019, we did we did the San Rafael area MSR. In that MSR, we um, noticed that CSA 18 used to have two functions. One was to, uh, the original function that it had was formed in 1973, was to purchase an open space area um, that eventually, eventually got donated to um, the open space district. That area is now, you probably know it as this, the uh, San Pedro Open Space Preserve. Um, it, while, that was, while that bond was getting paid off that to purchase that land by the residents of CSA 18, there was the uh, Galenas Village Community Service District that um, needed to be terminated and the, its responsibilities needed to be transferred. Back in the mid 80s, there was a discussion between LAFCO, the county and the old CSD board and what was determined was that the county would create a zone of benefit within CSA 18, because that's where that old CSD boundary uh, or district was, um, to take over all liabilities and responsibilities of the CSD. They transferred over all, they transferred over all the uh, ad valorem property tax, they transferred over any money they had, any liabilities they had, all got put into this, uh, of the old CSD got put into this zone of benefit. Now, LAFCO's don't create zone of benefits. Those can only be created by the jurisdiction that is creating it. Special districts, cities, anyone can create a zone of benefit. And that's what was created uh, for this. Once the uh, open space preserve was created and it was the bond was paid off, all of a sudden you had a much larger CSA than was actually really utilizing the CSA. The, the old CSD was really the only people putting money into the CSA anymore, into that zone of benefit. Um, so what we are doing today, based on the recommendation from the 2019 report, is looking to shrink the boundaries of CSA 18 down to be more of what it actually is functioning and doing today. Um, and that is to take care of the old CSD boundaries and a couple of other little things that are going on in that area that, that the uh, CSA kind of has taken on as a side job um, since then. So what you have is, is that. Now, there has been a lot of, unfortunately, there's been a lot of misinformation that's been presented to the community by people. Um, and so I wanted just to walk you through what some of those things are and tell you what the, what the facts are so you're aware of, of what's going on here. Um, one of the biggest ones that's been par parlayed out there is that somehow this CSA is going to um, all of a sudden take care of street medians. The LAFCO has never authorized the CSA to have the, the power of street medians. It is a power that can be done. There's actually a CSA not too far down the road from this area that actually does do street medians. But this particular CSA has never been authorized by LAFCO to do street medians. And as part of this whole thing, I understand that the county at one point actually did a review of all the money it's ever spent and came back and said, we've never spent money on street medians. Um, what has transpired, however, is the CSA a few times over the last few years a couple of times, I think, in the last six years, if I'm not mistaken, actually had on there had a discussion about the street medians because at one point in time, from my understanding of the history of the street median, is there was some discussion that the county was going to pave it over, that they couldn't maintain it anymore. And some of the people in the community actually said, wait, we don't want that. We're going to volunteer to take care of it. And kind of the CSA 18 advisory board kind of became a place where they could have a discussion about what's going on with the street median if they wanted to. And 
since they're not spending any CSA 18 funds, because those can only be spent on rec and park services, because that's the only power that the CSA actually has, as well as open space districts, um, they've been allowed to do that. And so, and then in addition, there's one park that was never part of the original CSD, Castro Park. Um, and so there's like these two things that the CSA took on after the CSD dissolved itself. And so what we're saying is, if they want to continue to do that, that's fine. Castro Park is actually a rec and park issue, and they do spend money on it. LAFCO has no issues with that. Um, but so, so th those are the two big things that are occurring. Um, there has been, there, there was a lot of discussion about what to do with the boundary itself, because you do have this Castro Park, which is what we're going to essentially be doing is creating an island of CSA 18 that exists separate from the rest of the CSA 18. There's going to be this little dot on the side where Castro Park exists because none of the parcels around Castro Park actually pay into CSA 18. And for from a LAFCO perspective, you really don't want to have parcels that aren't paying into the district be part of it because it, it causes some confusion when things come up on the ballot, who gets to vote for stuff. You really want to try and keep it to who are the parcel owners that are going to end up paying for whatever's going on. And the only ones that right now are paying are the people in the zone of benefit. So the private parcels in this district are all paying into CSA 18. Everything that um, Jim, who's on this, who's, who you see as a panelist now, and the county has done is they've double and triple checked that list to make sure we know exactly who is paying into CSA 18. And those private parcels are being kept in there. And then based on my recommendation, I said, keep all those, those should be the only private parcels. And then the government parcels, you help fill in the map, Make sure you're covering everything that you want to cover, because if you take a government parcel out, you really shouldn't be doing anything with it on the advisory board or with or with the group anymore. So that's why they kept Castro Park in, because they're like, well, wait, we fund Castro Park, even though it's outside the zone of benefit. So we want to keep that. And then the advisory board also said they wanted to keep these street medians in there. So um, so like I said, there's been a lot of discussion in the community. You have a lot of emails and public comment that was submitted in the packet originally. And then over the course of this week, we've actually been getting a lot of emails. And so this morning we issued a supplemental to the packet, which you should have gotten, um, which was another 55 pages of um, emails and, and uh, information from the general public for you to review as part of this. Um, the, the last thing I will say is I've actually been to several community meetings, the advisory board itself, met six times to have a discussion about what the boundary should look like. So there was, in my opinion, plenty of uh, discussion by the advisory board as to how the boundary should do. I do think that they've done a good job on creating it. Um, one final thing I will say is we originally had wanted to take out the powers, uh, the investment of powers from the Marin Open Space District, because if you're shrinking the boundaries down, there's no way this little area can afford to buy a big parcel of land ever again and purchase it. It's going to be way too expensive. And so we wanted to take that power away. Unfortunately, um, that power can only be, that that divestment of power in this process can only be done if the county board of supervisors had actually approved that in a resolution. While they did approve two resolutions on this, they forgot to include that divestment of power. Um, so I'm going to be presenting to you tonight a amended version of the resolution in the packet which basically takes out the divestment of uh, power from the open space district. And this makes this a detachment of parcels. Um, so if you want, let me pull that up real quickly for you so I can share that and show you what those changes um, are. And just give me one second here to do that. So while you're doing that, just to clarify what you just said there, um, that they, they forgot to do that. Does that mean that that's something that's a cleanup item that might come to us later? Is that, or they, is this? Yeah, I mean, they could come to us later and do it. Um, I, I'm not necessarily sure I would encourage them to do a full application just to do that on its own. Um, it's one of those things, it's a power that they would have. It's a power I don't ever see them really using, which is why we suggested them taking it out. But since it wasn't put in the resolutions uh, that the Board of Supervisors approved, I'm just we're, we're just going to leave that power sit there, but they're never going to use that power because it's, it's not one that they could afford to ever do. Um, and so... <coughs> This is where you will see the red line on your screen where I say, you know, change of, reor it's a reorganization, it's a change of organization. We take out that investment of powers. And this is like a common theme throughout this uh, resolution. Each time I stop, it's that's basically exactly what we're doing. There's one spot where we do something slightly different. Um, 
and that's the section three where we do talk about that change. We did add in, um, based on discussions Mala and I had about clarifying what this 3,914 acres are, we add in that, that 3,757 acres is what we're removing and that what's remaining is about 157 acres. Um, we, that is a very important distinction to have because this is likely going to have to have a, um, a, excuse me, let me make sure I get the right term, a conducting authority proceedings, which is basically similar to a protest proceedings type system to try and use more common language. Um, and it's the people who live in the 3,757 acres that get to be part of that because they're the ones being removed. The people who are in the 157 acres do not participate in that. So that's why we why we decided to add this in here, just to make sure it was very clear what's being detached, what's remaining. So it's clear as to who gets to participate in the conducting authority proceedings compared to um, who doesn't. That's, that's, and those are the people staying in the CSA. So that is a very high level discussion there. I know there were a lot of questions from the public, a lot of comments. If the board has any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. Um, Jim Chaco, who is with uh, County, Marin County Parks, is representative of the applicant. And if, if, if you want to say any additional comments, you're, you're welcome to do so. Um, thank you very much, Jason. Uh, I think you did a great job framing it. I'll just take a second to introduce myself since um, I'm new to many folks here. My name is Jim Chaka. I'm a superintendent with Marin County Parks. Um, I do want to thank Jason and, and Jaron and Olivia for their support uh, all the way from the MSR through this application process. This is somewhat new for our department to shepherd something like this through. Um, but um, no, I just wanted to be available for any questions that come up and also to let folks know that our director and general manager, uh, Max Corton, is in attendance in the uh, attendees side of the Zoom and is also available if anything should come up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chick, and thank you, Mr. Corton, for being here. Um, uh, before I move to Commissioner Kohler's question, um, Jason, I just want to clarify. Um, so uh, this is a uh, reducing the size of CSA 18, uh, what would be in the powers of CSA 18 is only park and recreation services. There are no other uh, blatant powers that have been activated. And then the parcels that will be removed from CSA 18 would receive uh, any park and rec services, since that's the only service we're talking about from Marin County Open Space District. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that's basically correct. Um, I, I will add, we are also not changing the zone of benefit. We don't have the power to do so. The one caveat I'll put in that, uh, Commissioner McEntee, I think since 1973, some of the areas that are in CSA 18 are actually in, have been incorporated into San Rafael itself now. And so those parcels would actually receive park services from the city and not from the county since they've been annexed in since 1973. So that there and, and again, we're talking about the parcels that are being divested, detached, detached sorry, from yes. CSA 18. So, so this is not going to result in anyone getting services from two entities. Correct. Okay. So some of the services, some of the parcels that are being detached will remain in city of San Rafael and some of them will, those that are unincorporated will receive park and rec services from, pardon me, um, excuse me, um, the open space district. Correct. Okay. All right. Just to clarify that, um, Commissioner Kohler. Yeah, I just have a question kind of about process, which I might ask Mala. Um, given that this is a public hearing, and at least um, perhaps I missed it, but I did not see the changes that Jason just showed on the screen in the resolution about the divestiture and not a reorganization, but organization, it would seem I think it might be a good idea to continue this matter because it's a public hearing and people did not see that change, um, which I think um, would allow time for the county to make this extra step of divestiture should they want to do so. But I think for purposes of a public hearing, um, Molly, I just would ask you, this is the first time I've seen that language change and I'm not sure that members of the public have seen that either. Commissioner Kohler, I don't think there's any requirement to continue it if the, if the commission wants to take action tonight, but it's always the pleasure of the commission, but I don't think legally there's a requirement to continue it. Okay. Well, then, well, then is, 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 does that mean that there, the changes are not substantively different than what the public has seen or are they 
substantively different, uh, just to address Commissioner Kohler's concerns. It is removing, as as Jason mentioned, it is removing the the divestiture of power issue from the application. The the change from change of organization versus reorganization is really just because a reorg is is two items and a change of organization is one. So I don't think that is of any significance. It's really the divestiture of power of something okay. that. So isn't the divestiture of power a significant change? And as far as I know. I had not seen that language till tonight. So um, procedurally, it would seem to me that members of the public should have seen that as well. And I'm, I'm not, I did not see that posted in the supplement. Was it posted in the supplement? It was not posted in the supplement. Okay. I mean, I'm fine with what was written, all the comments we received, but I do have concerns that um, we're seeing this divestiture removed tonight, and I'm not I'm not interested in really delaying this, but I just wonder if we're giving people an opportunity to really see what we're proposing. Could you, could you, um, Jason? Could you just put that language up so everybody can take a look at it? And then I have a couple questions that might help clarify that. And I I, I definitely hear. Commissioner Kohler's concerns that people haven't seen this. So can you put that up on the screen? Yeah, so I'm, the commission... I'm doing so right now. Okay. Um, so here, I mean, I will just go to the title because that's the first top part here. So this is what we're doing. I mean, to be fair, what you're, the changes that you're seeing is what everything that would coincide with what the county's actions have taken. So the members of the public who are paying attention to this item, from my perspective, this is what they saw in the amended version, the county actually do. Um, and so they like in, in my from my perspective, I think that the public is aware that the county was only asking to detach these things. They forgot to include from my perspective, forgot to include the divestment of powers in their resolution. So the public is well aware that they were doing this detachment. Um, and the first time they actually the public would have seen divestment of powers is when it came into the LAFCO process itself. So Jason, then um, just to to Okay, so so the 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 two the two things that would have made it a, a reorganization versus an organization are um, the 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 park and rec power, and then the power to purchase and transfer land. Is that no. what the second? What's the, what's that? What's the what's being what's the divestiture? The, the two, what the was two, it being divested? Yeah, the two items that are in front of you that were in the original resolution were detachment of parcels, that's item one. Item two is that investment of powers from the open space district. Those are the two items that LAFCO had wanted to see done with the, this application. So, Since so the, that investment yeah. of powers wasn't done by the county, we're, we're saying, I'm saying at least, I'm okay with that occurring. We're just gonna do the, the one item of the parcel detachment. Okay, so then what, so what's, what's happening is we're, we're um, shrinking the size of CSA 18. So, so what CSA 18 is going to be doing doesn't change, hasn't changed, will not change. What um, the, the part that would have made it a little cleaner would have been if, <laughs> sorry, this is when he decides to bark. Um, the, the, the part that would have made it a little cleaner would be to say, and those parcels remaining in CSA 18 will receive park and rec services from CSA 18 only and not from Marin County open space. But because that cleanup action didn't occur at the county level, is it now that they receive that from both places? Well, this, it, it, the members of the, the parcels remaining in CSA 18. The, 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 the zone of benefit, which is the area that's remaining in CSA 18, has never, like within itself, has never received services from the open space district. Um, the, the, the members who were part of the larger thing, they purchased land and they gave the land to the open space district and so similar to what occurred with CSA 23 and 25, if the CSD hadn't dissolved and put, been put into the CSA, this CSA would have been dissolved the same way 23 and 25 were that we did, you know, a couple of meetings ago, I think it was maybe three meetings ago now. Um, so the, the folks are not, the, you are correct that nothing is changing as far as what services they are receiving and what services can be received by this district. That is staying 100% the same. The only thing that we are doing is detaching the parcels, and we were going to get rid of this 
this power that they hadn't used since 1994. So no one really and, and the, that power is and that the, power the, is the, the the power to purchase land and donate it to the open space district. Okay. So they so will still that have power, right that to power do that. does that power does remain uh, with the C with CSA 18. Yeah, that power. If 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 you approve the amended version of the resolution, that power stays with CSA 18. But like I said during my presentation, I don't think CSA 18 will ever again, if you if you shrink its boundaries down, will ever again purchase land and donate it to the open space district because it's way too small to be able to buy any piece of land that would be useful to the open space district. Right. So um, the so the the so the CSA 18 as if we do this will be uh, will be smaller will be a smaller number of parcels and CSA 18 will be able to do two things one is to provide park and rec services and two to be able to purchase land and transfer that land to Marin County Open Space District those are the two powers if should we pass this amended resolution that they would have that is which correct. are which are the powers that they had before yes correct okay so there is there, this would this does not change any any uh, powers that the C that CSA 18 had, um, it just makes them apply to a smaller number of parcels. Correct. Okay. So in in that way, these these uh, this language change doesn't doesn't have any change in the effect of the 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 powers provided. Um, it just makes more clear what those are. Correct. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the. Uh, it's a the the um, couple of uh, uh, oddities about this. Uh, there were some concerns, as you said, uh, that about paying for for street medians, um, and you commented that that is not a latent power of the CSA 18. We just we just established we only they only have two things they can do. Um, what would be the effect if they decided that they wanted to pay for street medians without activating the latent power? Uh, LAFCO would, as you're going to see in our, when we update our policy thing, LAFCO would have the right to go after them legally to tell them to stop. And LAFCO would tell them reimburse CSA 18 for any street media money that was spent mm -hmm. to the county should reimburse because it's not a power that the CSA has. Okay. So there, so the, uh, as you said, there's no history of doing this. There's no history of paying for any street medians. If, if that, uh, that, uh, board organization decided on their own to start paying for street medians, then they would incur the uh, these consequences from LAFCO and would be forced to return that money. Okay. Um, second question is uh, the so that we're creating this uh, island. Usually, we're talking about an island that is is not part of a district. This is an island that is part of a district that's outside of its 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 usual um, its. Uh, contiguous boundaries, the uh, the Ca Castro Park, because uh, CSA 18 has habitually paid for the maintenance of this park. If that part weren't included, um, then what? Who would be responsible for that park? If the CSA, the CSA decided to, they could decide that they're going to stop funding the park. At which point, the county, I guess, would just take over responsibility because that that. Parcel technically was never annexed into the zone of benefit. Um, you know, at some point the, the county may want to actually do an annexation or, or do an amendment to the zone of benefit to include Castro Park. Um, but that's not really something that that LAFCO is directly concerned with um, as far as it goes. But if they wanted to, the, the advisory board could say, and, and the board of supervisors doing the official approvals could mm -hmm. say, we're stop funding it. I don't think that anyone on the advisory board wants that. LAFCO is not actually suggesting that. I don't want anyone yep. to take, come out of this saying, I'm suggesting that occur, but that technically is what could occur if, okay. the, if the desire was there. Yeah, and we're not annexing any of the adjacent parcel, parcels between the park and CSA 18 into that because they aren't currently in uh, pay, uh, paying for that because they aren't currently in CSA 18. And uh, um, so you know that would be a whole different process. So, just just clarifying the 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 island on that. Okay. Um, so, for, so that that clarifies it for me. Um, I don't know uh, whether any other people have questions before we go to the public hearing, but we can go to deliberative comments after that. Commissioner Moody. I just want to add that um, Vice Chair Caius internet got disconnected. He's trying to get back in. Oh, thank you. 
Okay. Well, I, I never seen as many comments uh, over LAFCO issue uh, in in the few years I've been working here. Uh, uh, but one of the comments was, well, why weren't the uh, properties around that park annexed in? Um, because they are getting benefit from that and they're not paying into it. Is there an explanation for that? I know you had all these discussions and meetings, so there must be an yeah, explanation I mean, for that. Thank what, you. The, the zone of benefit was created, was, was a byproduct of the old CSD that was created in the 1950s. So it predates LAFCO. Um, LAFCO wasn't around when the old CSD was created. So I can't exactly explain to you why certain parcels were included and, and others weren't. All I can tell you is the boundaries of the, CS, of the old CSD are the current zone of benefit. When the old CSD existed, it did not take care of Castro Park. From what I understand, Castro Park at one point was a little league field and the little league folks decided not to use that field anymore and said, we're willing to donate it. Who wants to, if anyone wants to take the land, you, it's, it's yours to kind of have. And so the CSA 18 advisory board at that point said, hey, there's this great opportunity for a new little park in our area. Let's go ahead and take it. And so they, they took it and they started uh, doing their stuff to it. Um, and so that's why the, the thing was, when they did that, I mean, I will say this, hindsight is 2020. Like I would have said back in the day, knowing what I know now, Perhaps in order to take on that park, the, the CSA advisory board should have gone to the neighbors of Castro Park and said, hey, are you guys willing to join our zone of benefit, pay a few dollars? That didn't occur. So because that never occurred, the folks that are, it, and Prop 13 also transpired from when the CSD was created to when it was dissolved. So the folks in Castro, around Castro Park, never had an ad, part of their ad valorem going to the, what is now the CSA never went to the CSD either. So there was no way for, for the county to like easily to say, oh, well, we can now add them in. There was no ad valorem. So they would have had to vote themselves an additional property tax bill. And that just has never transpired. And that was part of the discussion we actually had with the advisory board is like, if you're thinking that you can get those folks to pay and they're willing to have a vote and, you know, pay them, you know, agree to increase their property tax through a special assessment or some other system, then by all means, let's keep them in and let's have that vote and let's let them stay. But after we had that discussion, some of the advisory board members went out and talked to the community and basically was just realized they're not gonna vote for that. And so since they're not gonna vote for that, let's keep them out of the, the CSA. We are keeping a zone of, uh, sphere of influence, which is actually larger than the CSA. And it does include Castro Park and a few other areas. So if those folks ever want to come and join, they're already in the sphere of influence. So it's a pretty easy process to then say, oh, you're now taxing yourselves to be part of the CSA. Let's go ahead and do an annexation and, and, and annex you in. So we did take that into consideration in the process. So no, everyone likes to get a little for something free in their lives, in other words. Um, and there's no way to force, force that in. Okay, thank you. Yep. All right, thank you, Commissioner Moody. Sorry for the distraction there. Um, Okay, um, are there any other questions from the commission? And Mr. Chick, does, um, uh, does Mr. Corton wish to make any comments or are we, okay. If, if, he, if um, he does, he can raise his hand. Yeah, no, he's, he's here just to watch. And if there's a, a question that is directed by the public or yourselves to him, he's available, but I'll, I can be okay. representative for the purpose of, of this. Okay, call. very good, thank you very much. If there are no further questions from the commission, we will open the public hearing on this item. If any member of the public wishes to comment, please raise your hand. It looks like there's one hand raised. Go ahead and start raising your hands. And, and you will have- will call out your name and then you will have two minutes and please pay attention to Jaren's uh, video. Yeah, I'll that. give Deputy uh, Executive Officer Seibel a moment to get set up. It looks like he's ready to go now. Um, I saw public member Ronald Ford's hand raised first. so. Um, Mr. Ford, I'm giving you permission to talk or to mute and unmute yourself. And uh, for all those members of the public who are speaking, you're going to go ahead and have two minutes to speak. It's not a back and forth. We will hear your comments. They will be in considered among the deliberations. Thank you very much. Um, thank you. My name is Ron Ford. I'm former chair of CSA 18. I was on that board for 11 years. Um, I'm one of the primary people who helped to get Castro Park. Uh, we bought it from Dixie Terrell and Lou. They did not give it to us. We gave them $5,000. They wanted 
four hundred thousand dollars. So um, I, I've got all the history you need on that. So consult me. Um, let me also say that I'm not representing the Las Colinas Valley Sanitary District tonight. I'm a rookie director over there. Um, Craig Murray would be doing that were he here. Uh, let me say this. Um, I, I think Jason has, has misinterpreted a few things. Um, if Castro Park, first of all, none of the none of the parcels around Castro Park pay into Castro Park's maintenance. None of them. It's the zone of benefit that was created outside of Castro Park that pays for the maintenance of Castro Park. Now, if Castro Park were absorbed into that zone of benefit, their taxes would not increase. We all pay 1%. We all pay 1%. And that money is divvied up. We know how it's divvied up to 24% for the counties and special districts. We all seen that pie chart. But stating that they would pay more taxes is just not correct unless they pass an assessment to pay more taxes. Now, in order for them to come into the zone, um, there's been suggestion that they would have to vote on an, an assessment to get into the zone. And I said, well, would a penny do? A penny might do. Um, but stating that it would increase their taxes, I just don't think it's correct to say. Um, you know, when you look at the map, and I know you probably don't have the map in front of you, all of you, but there's a little tail on the map. That's North San Pedro Road. We don't know why that tail was put on there other than to include North San Pedro Road and the medians within CSA 18. We don't need that tail. We're, we're opposed to the. I muted the public member because the public comment time had expired. But Mr. Ford, if you have any other comments to submit to the commission, you're welcome to submit them by email. And I am going to give the next public member with their hand raised the ability to talk, which is Ms. Ms. Nunez. And that Olivia, Olivia, what's sorry, Olivia, what's the email address so that um, Mr. Ford or anyone else who's interested can send their comments? Of course, it's staff at marinlafco.org and it's also available on our website if you're looking for that. So you can always go to marinlafco.org and find staff's emails on there. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ms. Nunez. Okay, um, I have a question about the boundary. The, um, what you're talking about zone of benefit glutus, um, Village CSD was formed in, in 1959, and the um, North San Pedro Road has never been in that boundary in the six, last 65 years. And you and it's a very small district, and there's 555 parcels that actually pay into it. And we maintain the parks. And we don't have money to spend on medians. So when you're talking about CSA 18. The CSD predated the CSA. This, the people in Galinas Village also paid for the open space. So it's, it's kind of like we paid for both things, but now we're only paying for our parks. That's all that we have. So you said you can't change the zone of benefit. I asked Mr. Freed this several times. I asked you guys to ask him, will this proposal change the boundaries of the zone of benefit? which is Galena's Village CSD Parks. That's what I want an answer to. And also the Board of Supervisors resolution detached 579 parcels. That was Galena's Village Zone of Benefit. That's what was on theirs. Yours is detaching to 2753. If you're just detaching parcels, you're not changing a boundary of of um, the Galena's Village. The people of Galena's Village did not get to comment on any changing of a boundary because the Board of Supervisors resolution was only to detach 579 parcels. So we have not been able to comment on this. The public comment time has expired, but again, if there are more public comments to be submitted, Ms. Nunez, you're welcome to do that. And then I currently do not see any other public members hands raised and I did not see any emails in our inbox. Uh, two hands just got raised. Oh, I do see two hands raised now. I will allow, I will, 
extend the permission to speak to Ms. Stein now. Yeah, hi, I just wanted to make the comment that this is really a complicated uh, issue because of all the CSA boundaries. And I don't think this community has had the understanding to be able to comment on this. There's been three different applications submitted so far. There's changes tonight. And I just don't feel like we have had a chance to voice our opinion on this. You know, our, our CSA was created to pay for parks and recreation. Medians don't fit into that. So I don't understand why that's even being added. So um, that's all. I believe that was all the comment. Nope, there's one more. Well, Linda no, from, from the one from the one member. That's oh, yes. what I meant by that. Yes. Um, give me one moment, and I will give Ms. I believe it's Levy, but apologies if I mispronounce that. And you now have the ability to mute and unmute yourself. Unmute. Hello, Commission. Hello, commissioners. My name is Linda Levy. I live at 1515 Vendola Drive in Santa Venetia. I've already submitted a comment letter, but I wanted to summarize my position for the record. I have lived in Santa Venetia for over 30 years. I've served, volunteered on the Santa Venetia Neighborhood Association Board of Directors for almost 30 years and the CSA 18 Parks Advisory Board for over 14 years where I'm currently the chair. As a member, we have worked over two years on these boundary changes for our CSA 8 team to better represent the correct current tax base. We've had numerous meetings with staff, with advisory board members, with LAFCO staff and community residences, residents where we discussed the new boundaries and what they would include. We made a conscious decision to broaden the sphere of influence and included the medians and Castro Field in the adjusted boundaries. And the reasons were because we've put so much money into Castro Park already and we didn't want to see it suffer. And the reason we kept the medians in is we wanted to have some sort of control over these green spaces in our neighborhood. We did this with the understanding that this does not encumber us to do anything or pay anything for the medians. It just gives us a seat at the table if they're being discussed. The dream for the future is to create a new CSA, a new CSA, sorry, and a funding source for our medians. And if we do that, we can discuss it within our CSA 18 meetings. If we don't keep them in, we can't. And that was one of the main reasons I wanted them in. I also wanted to address the petition that was submitted because not only did a few of the people I spoke with say they didn't understand what and why they were signing, a lot of the names are not in the zone of benefit, which is what every, which is our new taxpayers. So the people signing it were not in the tax base. In closing, Thank you for your time and consideration. I ask your commission to support the proposed changes and approve this resolution. Perfect timing. And that is the final hand I see raised of people who have not spoken yet. And were, uh, were any emails received in the interim? Um, I not since your last supplemental packet. Yes, not since your last supplemental packet. Okay, I know we, we offered to the couple of people who, who uh, ran out of time to go ahead and submit their comments by email. I just wanted to see whether any either of them has done it's so. my understanding that those email comments will be released to the commission after the meeting, because if they were to be read during the meeting um, right now, it would almost be a sense of double dipping in terms of the two minute time limit. So if those emails are received between now and, and whenever they will be sent out to the commission, regardless of whether or not the commission takes action on this item tonight. Mala, can you just clarify that piece of it? That's correct. I think it was a courtesy that Olivia was mentioning that people could always email the commission, but their public comment time, as noted earlier, was two minutes. So we're not reading into the record any subsequent emails that are received. Got it. Okay. All right. So let's see. We've got, oh, okay, so that's the commissioner. All right, so we have uh, no further public uh, public comments by hand raise or by email. So I will go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for deliberation. Commissioner Kohler. Yeah, just a question. I think um, Ms. Nunez raised some issues that um, I'm not sure that I completely understand them, but I'm wondering if Jason can speak to clarifying just some of those things which seemed um, 
to kind of con obfuscate or confuse things for me at least. So would you mind speaking to that? Sure, happy to do so. Um, and Jason, um, if you uh, there were a couple of people asked uh, about the uh, uh, the map. I wonder if you could, while you're explaining it, put the map up so people can see what specifically we're okay, referring I, to. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and find the map while I'm doing this. But but first, I wanted to first address Ms. Nunez's comment about me not answering her questions. Um, Ms. Nunez and I have had 16 email exchanges since um, November. Um, on January 1st, I found, or January 4th, I found one of them. And in it, I say, now to the current application, the county gives us does not impact the boundary of the current zone, as in the zone of benefit. It changes the CSA boundary. Um, it, there's a much longer email, and most of the email exchanges with her tend to be pretty long and lengthy. Um, I think Supervisor Radoni has been a part of some of those emails, so you could probably attest to the level of emails we've been getting on this subject matter. So I did address her concerns. I have mentioned to her before, the zone of benefit is not impacted in any way, shape or form, that nothing that the CSA is doing is impacted in any way, shape or form. No money is being spent by the CSA on street medians. It can't now and it can't in the future. I have repeated that multiple times in multiple emails. Um, I don't know any other way to say it clearer than that, that nothing that, that is occurring here is being done. Um, to address, um, I believe it was Ron Ford who <coughs> made a comment about the tax increases to the area. The way CSA 18 gets all of its money right now is part of the ad valorem. In order to, to change the ad valorem, the 1%, and I spent an hour and a half talking with him about this earlier this week, um, is you would have to have a tax exchange agreement. Someone who currently gets money, whether it's the water district, the school district, the county, the any of the, I think there's 14 or so, probably uh, different districts that are part of the ad valorem. One of them would have to say, I'm giving up part of my ad valorem so you can take it and give it to CSA 18. I'm not aware of any district or any government agency that gets an ad, part of their ad valorem that's willing to give up their portion, a part, part of their portion to CSA 18 to pay for it. So that's why I'm saying in order to, to for anyone to raise to pay money, you're not going to get it out of that 1%. You can't. None of that in Castro Park neighborhood goes to CSA 18. You have to have a tax exchange agreement to do that. So I I, I there is I, I stand by my statement. The only way to do it is I guess you could technically get the county or somebody or perhaps I, I think I, I think I think that what my understanding of kind of the root of his question was I think he was reacting to uh, they'd have to their tax bill would increase and I think what he what it sounded to me like the 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 uh, commenter meant was well it no it their bill wouldn't increase it would just get divided differently and your point is yes it would just get divided differently but that would only be able to occur with a tax exchange agreement is that correct that, that yeah or they could vote themselves a special assessment which is what I continue right. to say right. is if they vote themselves a special assessment their taxes increase by that special assessment so um I so those are like the from the speakers that spoke against this thing. Those are the main issues. I, I I partly agree with you know with Ron that it would be great if the Castro Park neighbors actually paid into the CSA, but there's no mechanism to do that that I have or LAFCO has or even the county unless it wants to give up a portion of its ad valorem has to actually do that. So I think that the boundaries that they created are correct. I mean we can have I, there have been six public meetings uh, at the advisory board. We're having the board of supervisors have this on their agenda multiple times. Um, we're having it tonight. So there's been plenty of opportunity for the community to give their input and statement. Staff's recommendation would be to support what the advisory board and the board of supervisors has put forward with the amendment since we didn't get the divestment of powers. I am not super concerned about that investment. It was kind of like a, hey, while we're doing this, why not do something a little bit extra? It wasn't done. It's not going to to have any harm to the district. The district will continue to only do what it has been doing all of these years, which is fund the um, Rec and Park services for these four little parks, including Castro Park, um, and allow them to have a discussion about street medians, but never spend money on it. Thank you, okay. Jason. It looks like Jim wants to add something. Oh, I just wanted to offer to share my screen with the map if that was helpful. Oh, I, yeah, thank you. yeah, I think that'd be great. So, thank you. Okay. Um, you know, I apologize. This is a PDF of a map. It's not Marin map. So zooming in does create some blurriness, but it'll give you the idea of where some of these islands are located and sort of the general um, 
location of the uh, sphere, the proposed sphere of influence and the proposed boundary. Have you been given permission to share screen or do we need to do that still? I'm um, good. I just was trying to do that while I was talking okay. at the same time. So it slowed me down. Um, so just for reference, this, uh, the red boundary, everything in red is, is our parcels that we're proposing to uh, remain in CSA 18. This little red blob over here is Castro Park. Um, and this tail is North San Pedro Road. So everything in yellow is the proposed um, SOI. And if I zoom out a bit, you'll be able to see um, the current, um, oops, excuse me, CSA 18 boundary, which was quite extensive. Um, sorry, that's probably not helpful either, but in the red sort of diagonal lines was the old um, CSA 18 boundary that was created at the time of the acquisition of San Pedro Mountain and the bond measure that was associated with that. If you can scroll out a little bit more, because I don't even think you have the full amount on the screen right now. I, I don't, and I'm going to go way out here. Um, okay, so it was considerably bigger. I, and I, and I, the, this little red line here um, it, uh, that's North San Pedro Road is what a couple of the commenters made note of. Um, Jason, can you comment on, or, or even Mala, um, is that, so we have the little blob that is the park, and then is there also, it just is very difficult to see from this. It looks like that there is an island of that piece of road is that yeah, correct unfortunately the way the map is drawn um the there is that red line extends all the way into the di into like the main portion of the district i just think the way crossovers occur it's that entire section that you can kind of see a very faint red line that follows mm -hmm. the yellow but it doesn't come out as clearly as one would like but it the the official maps that we have include that street median all the way from what i'll call the the main block of the of the remaining portion of CSA and connecting it all the way to the very end. Jim, if you can maybe put your cursor to the end of where that road ends right mm -hmm. there. And um, and and what's the what's the rationale for that that road not being detached? The the reason for the road not being detached is currently there are some volunteers in the neighborhood who maintain that street median and the CSA advisory board has been the place that they have gone to in the past to have discussions about things going on with that street median. No money is spent by the CSA. It's simply a place to do it. It's really at the end of the day, the only local advisory board that is available to the residents of this area that has that has been doing this. Um, and so- I, Yeah, so, that, I, so that's I, why, I, yeah. I understand why they're, that the discussions are happening there and that's fine as long as um, you know, that sometimes happens. That's a, you know, it's a community gathering place that they can have community discussions. Um, the, you know, it's understood that they can't, you know, couldn't fund it. But why have that part? Why have the road be within the district? They could still have those conversations. If it's, if it's taken out of- Because if, it, because if, it's, if it's in there, that means it's not in Marin County open space. The road is not in, in Marin County open well, space. Well, it, it's that? not about being in the open space. It's about the fact that if it's not in the district boundaries, then the district shouldn't be talking about something outside of its boundaries, which is why we do Castro Park as a little island to the side, because we want the CSA to continue to be able to have the discussions and do things for okay. that. There, they're able to spend money on the street median. They're not able to spend money on that little eye on that median. So if you took the median out, they're still not able to spend money on it. But it, the advisory board loses the ability to say this is in our jurisdiction and we want to have a discussion about the street meeting because it's no longer there. They can't have that discussion anymore in the same manner. So that so that was a request from from that board to Correct. keep to keep it in. So I can see why the public is confused because that's very it's a very nuanced yes. position there. So the the uh, by per request of CSA eighteen, they're going to do two things that are outside of their, the, the, the bulk of that red portion. One is they're going to fund the park as they have, have done and they want to continue to do. Two is they're going to host discussions of volunteer efforts to fund and maintain the median. So, they, so they'd like to continue to do that. However, it is understood that the, the CSA cannot, has not ever been able to, cannot and will not be able to be the holder of the funds for that. Correct. Um, 
And then there was this one other thing, once we get past the street meetings, I wanted to get to that uh, public comment made about an error in the Board of Supervisors resolution, but I'll, I'll hold off until you're done with your, your part of the um, discussion. Okay, I, the, the other question that I had was, um, uh, regarding the, the, there was confusion around the zone of benefit uh, um, for either Jason or for Mala. Can LAFCO do a detachment or an annexation that is different than a zone of benefit that's established by the dis by a district? Like, so we, we, we've we, we've we've clarified that LAFCO doesn't have any cannot affect the zone of benefit, um, but we can do the annexation or the, or the detachment. So, is there anything in LAFCO law that requires those things to be um, congruent with each other? The the only thing I would say on that is. There's nothing that says we have to be congruent. If they, if the CSA was looking to actually shrink its boundaries less than the zone of benefit, I would say there'd be an issue there because you'd have people paying in, but they wouldn't be part of the part of the uh, CSA anymore. But there's nothing to say that you can't make it bigger than the people that pay into it. Because I mean, at the end of the day, you kind of have to do that because you have to include the, the parks and the streets and none of those actually pay into it. Those are zero sum parcels which is what the street median is as well. It's a zero sum parcel. So you can define how you want to incorporate that any way you want. As long as they don't shrink less than the zone of benefit, we don't have any issue with them. They, they, the, we don't control zone of benefits. That's something the county for the CSA does. <clears throat> and they, you know, if they do it for flood districts and all those other people too. Um, so if Mal, if you disagree with me on that, please speak up. Oh, I agree. Okay. Any, any further clarifying comments, Mala, on that? Okay, okay. So, uh, so okay. So, for, if I if I am to sum up here, um, it, it it sounds to me like okay. So, so all of this is is driving from the 2019 San Rafael Municipal Service Review, where we, the, some this this uh, cleanup was was envisioned, and in the in the, in the steps there, the county, um, di, um, the county. So tell me, tell me what the county resolution did now before so, I... Okay, so the county resolution only does one thing. It, it talks about the detachment of parcels. Did, okay, so the did, did, did detachment. Okay, so yeah. sorry, just wanted, they, just wanted to clarify. So, yeah. so, so, um, so we have, but, you know, one thing, so, so 2019 MSR, um, then the county um, detached the parcels or, or, or um, uh, did, did their part of the detachment of the uh, detachment of the parcels. Um, the remaining parcels would have the two powers that they have had, uh, that, that they have always had, which are uh, the uh, park and rec services for the, you know, the parcels under CSA 18 and the ability to purchase and uh, um, hand over land to the Marin County open space. Um, we've established that that's unlikely to happen with that smaller size, but those are the two powers street medians have never been activated as a power of CSA 18. If they wanted to do that, they would have to apply to LAFCO for an activation of that power. Uh, has not happened, hasn't ever been true. They've never spent money on that and they cannot spend money on it. If they did spend money on it, LAFCO would uh, pursue an in some sort of enforcement on that. Is that all? Did that I is, that is all correct. that correctly? Um, I do want to bring up that there was an error in the Board of Supervisors resolution. The uh, county attorney for the Board of Supervisors, you know, told me that they will correct that error. Um, and this union has brought it up partly in the resolution. In one spot, it says we're retaining 579 parcels. And in the next paragraph, it says we're detaching 579 parcels. That was an error. Um, the second number should have been 2,753, which is the number of parcels that are getting detached. <clears throat> um, all of our information that we're approving, if, if should you choose to approve tonight, would actually has the correct information in it. We we have mm -hmm. like Olivia has done an amazing job of quadruple checking this thing, making sure everything is, is accurate and correct mm -hmm. uh, based on our standards. So there there was a small error in the and the county has acknowledged that and said no, this is the correct number. Please mm -hmm. you know make sure that. You're doing that. So we, we when we're doing our part of the process, which for all intents and purposes is the official parcel, like the, the board says, here's your thing. And as, as those of you, the commissioners, but the public may not be aware of this, a lot of times we get applications and there are errors in them. And we have the authority and the ability to correct errors in, in the process, as long as what we're finally approving 
is the correct information. That's the most important part of the most important place to make sure the correct information exists. That's why LAFCO does its multiple checks, make sure everything is correct. Um, mm -hmm. And we try and avoid any errors whenever possible. Not to say we're, we're human, we do make them, but right. um, we, this one we have, make, I think we have it, everything correct in our resolution mm -hmm. for final approval, should you choose to do that. Okay, um, and the the uh, the changes that are uh, different from the packet that we saw, um, just to Commissioner Kohler's point, um, uh, I, I just would like to suggest that if we're going to send out the supplement as we did, that uh, next time we would also send out the red line changes. Um, I think that would be um, a good suggestion for the future, and I thank Commissioner Kohler for that uh, for for bringing up those issues. Um, are there any other deliberative comments or concerns from the commission? Okay. I'll be happy to make a motion. Okay. Um, I'll try to do it correctly. Approval of resolution 22.06 as amended tonight, approving a sphere of influence amendment and organization of county service area number 18, including detachment of 2,753 parcels with Marin County Open Space District, LAFCO file 1363. Is that correct, Mala? Not quite. I'm happy to read it, or you can just say um, it's approval of resolution 2206 as amended, as, dis as presented by the executive officer, I think. Okay, I'll move that. Thanks. We have a second. I'd be happy to second that motion from Barbara. Moved by Commissioner Kohler and seconded by Vice Chair Caius. Olivia, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Rodoni. Aye. Commissioner Kohler. Aye. Commissioner Moody. Aye. Commissioner Loader. Aye. Vice Chair Caius. Aye. Chairman McEntee. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you to all the members of the public who attended and who sent in comments. We really appreciate that and we appreciate you participating in the process. Um, if you have any further questions, you can uh, please email us. And thank you very much. Thanks to Marin County Parks as well. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chaka. Thank you. All right. So we will now move on to item number eight, the last of our public hearing items, approval of resolution 22-07, approving a comprehensive update to the fee schedule. Jason. Yeah, thank you, uh, Jason Freed. Um, this is something that was discussed by our uh, policy and personnel committee. It's an, uh, an update to the fee schedule. Um, as it sits right now, we waive our LAFCO application fees for things like the application we just did when it comes from an MSR. Um, something that in discussions that I've been having with like some staff of some districts is we realize that there are parcels that, especially in the water and sewer worlds, are being serviced by the districts, but were never properly annexed into the district. <laughs> um, so this is going way back, right? Is, what? Sorry to interrupt you. This is this is going way back. This is not. A... Yeah, no, yeah. This is this is going way back, like you know, decades ago in some cases of things occurring. You had one of these types of applications come in front of you um, not that long ago, the Marin Municipal Water District actually submitted an application on behalf of someone because they'd been serving the property for like 20 years, if I remember correctly. Um, and so what I wanna do is offer, for lack of a better term, an amnesty program to all of our member agencies and say, look, if you have a, if your district, and it, this is really more about districts and not about cities because cities those lines are very well known. No one ever gets added to a city by accident. Um, th 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 that is a much different process. It's a lot easier to accidentally have a district took someone up to a sewer line, not realizing they weren't in the district because a new staff member started and it just got missed 20, 30 years ago, or even 10 years ago in some cases. Um, so what I wanna do is sit down with all of our agencies, with, particularly on the special district side and say, are you serving anybody outside of your district, you know, I'm not going to ask too many questions on it. We know it exists. Um, we've had discussions there's like three districts I know right now that are doing research just to see is everyone actually in their district or not. Um, so what I want to do is create a, a fee schedule that says, look, if you work with us 
find all of these parcels that may be, and in some districts, it may be one parcel, some may have zero, others may have 10 or 15 for the larger ones. Let's find them all, let's do the research, let's work together, figure this out and come to us and let's clean up the maps. If you are if you do this in, in one big shot with us or what I call one big shot, it may end up being like two or three individual applications because of how things work, we might break up the thing, but come to us with a, with a one application or a group of applications together, we can do all of our approvals. It'll save us a lot of time, it'll save them a lot of time and we'll have a clean map and a clean system. So. What's in front of you today is what the policy and personnel committee decided to, to use as the policy, which is something I recommended to them, which is give every agency a one-time waiver it, to clean up your maps. Um, some agencies may not take advantage of it. Some agencies may not the clean, need to clean up their maps, but those that do, this will give them a one-time shot to come to us. We waive our basic fees as we do, as we just did with CSA 18, and we bring in, they still have to pay all third-party fees. So if there's like any mailers that need to go out, if there's any protest proceedings, anything like that, they're still gonna to need to pay for those third party fees, but at least LAFCO is gonna waive its fee. I think it's a benefit for our member agencies to get their maps cleaned up. Um, I like What you have is a very basic policy. I'm going to write a much more detailed memo to all the agencies so they understand in better detail, how will this actually work? And does it make sense for them to be participate? And my goal is to get as many of them as possible to do it, like I said, some agencies may be really good and never have had a, a, an accidental connection to their system, um, but a lot of them have. And so this is our way of trying to clean up the maps and get things done. And so that's what the uh, I'm presenting to you on behalf of the Policy and Personnel Committee today. Happy Thank you, Jason. Um, and uh, our, our chair of the Policy and Personnel Committee is um, uh, Commissioner Campbell, who I think is not here tonight. Correct. Um, and uh, I think the other member is uh, Commissioner Connolly, who's also not here today, and then, and then uh, me. I think you did a good job there. I don't have anything to add. Um, any uh, any questions from the commission on this on this uh, item? Seeing none, are there any members of the public who wish to comment on this item? Um, if so, we'll open the open the public hearing, and please raise your hand if you wish to comment. This is not a public hearing item. It, oh no, I'm sorry, it is. My apologies. It is a public hearing item. And Linda, you still have your hand raised in case you forgot to lower it from the last item. Thank you. Okay, are there any members of the public who wish to comment during the public hearing? I see no hands raised and there are no emails in my inbox. Okay, so seeing no members of the public that wish to comment, we will close this public hearing and bring it back to the commission for deliberation or a motion. Any takers on the motion or any deliberative comments? I'll move this item. Um, I'll second it as a as a uh, special district. Thank you. Moved by Commissioner Kohler and seconded by Commissioner Moody. Olivia, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Radoni. Aye. Commissioner Kohler. Aye. Commissioner Moody. Aye. Commissioner Loader. Aye. Vice Chair Caius. Aye. Chairman McEntee. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure, uh, thank you very much, Jason, for doing this cleanup too. I, I'm sure this will be a good way to bring some of that in. Okay, we, that's the end of our public hearing items. We will um, then move to our business items. Item number nine, approval of policy handbook amendments. Jason. All right, so our policy and personnel committee um, did some what I call cleanup work for the most part and added some new uh, items in there. You have all of them in the packet. I'm gonna do a very quick run through kind of the similar to how I do the executive officer's report where I'm just gonna rattle off each one. I'll look up and see if anyone like kind of raises their hand and wants to stop me. Otherwise, I'll just move on to the next one if you don't have a question on as I do them. The first one is a quick amendment to our expense reimbursements. As it stands right now, the chair is supposed to do all expense reimbursements for both myself and the staff. Um, this divides it up where the chair will continue to do my reimbursements approvals, but I do all the staff's reimbursements. Um, I know better what the staff has been up to and doing than the chair generally does. And for the most part, this commission has given all responsibility of staff to the executive officer. So this kind of falls in line with that same philosophy. Uh, the policy and personnel committee approved this unanimously. Um, the next item is authorization of balance limits. Um, as you might remember in our December meeting, 
<laughs> we had to authorize payment for, to M. Sarah from our county account. Um, what I'm asking for, similar to when we transfer funds, we know that this is a regular payment that we need to make. We, we know what it, the amount is. It will show up in, in your expense reports that you see in every meeting. When we do it, we do them quarterly right now. Um, so this authorizes the executive officer to make that payment without having to come to the commission every single time to do it. Um, it'll allow us to pay on a more expedient nature than having to wait for a commission meeting to get approvals. Um, approved unanimously by, actually all these were approved unanimously by the policy and personnel committee. Um, the next item is um, a little bit longer one. It's the out of service agreement uh, item. LAF, uh, CKH actually gives the ability for the commission to authorize the executive officer to deal with out of service agreements. Um, similar to what you had earlier today with the 11 Brighton one. Um, that could have been done by the executive officer without having to come to the commission if the commission authorizes us to do this. The commission in, in several places actually authorizes the executive officer to take actions without having to bring it. And in Marin Lafko's case, uh, how we deal with fire service, the out of service agreements, that is something that actually the commission has already authorized. We, when when uh, Twin Cities did their merger, that was, uh, and the out of service agreement needed to be done, that was actually executive officer approved because our policy handbook says so. Um, in a similar state, um, the commission, there will be protest proceedings that need to, to occur with CSA 18 because we did get letters of people protesting. Um, that entire hearing process, the commission has already authorized the executive officer to do. It doesn't have to come back to the commission to do. So what I'm looking for and the policy committee agreed with is, should we also give the out of service agreements to the executive officer to approve? And what it does do is it says, I have the author authority to do it as executive officer, but I can also kick it to the full commission. So if there was a controversial one, something that wasn't like 11 Brighton, where it like there could very well be like, you're doing a large amount of stuff or you're doing, there, there's some limitations to what I can do, but single parcels where there's no controversy behind it, um, I would bring to you if like, let's just take an example of something we're coming out of the Novato area and the urban growth boundary was involved. I wouldn't take on that type of an OSA. I would send it to the commission and let you have fun with the discussion around that one. Um, so what this is doing is simply giving authority to the executive officer to do what CKH allows you to do, which is give me the authority to do it. Let's get these things quickly done. We don't have to sit around and wait for stuff. Um, and so that's what this one does uh, as well. Um, and so it makes some changes around that. Um, and it gets rid of the emergency stuff going to the chair. It gives the executive officer to do emergency uh, OSAs as well, which in many cases in emergency situations, you have a septic tank that has failed and it needs to be replaced today. So me having to hunt down the chair, you know, granted our chair have to, right now has to be very accessible and I can generally get to them within a day, but that's not, may not always be the case. So this gives the executive officer the ability to say, go ahead and do the emergency OSA and we'll deal with the cleanup. Anything that I do, the, the policy does have a thing where if I do an, an OSA approval, I have to report it at the next commission meeting. So you always know that these things are occurring um, it won't be anything done in the dark. You will know just as an emergency OSA is done prior to a meeting, this will all follow the same path where I, where I report it out. Um, there's not a lot of OSAs that actually occur in Marin County, so it's rare that you're going to see me doing this, but it's more one of those things, hey, if it's there, why not take advantage of it? Um, so then the, the next ones are uh, new policies. Um, you know, we've been talking a lot about electronic signatures. Uh, we, we need to have, we should actually have an electronic policy signature. And so that's what you have in front of you. It's a pretty comprehensive one. We stole it from another LAFCO. Um, and you know, it, it's the current, like we're, we're using all the safety standards. It's a voluntary program. Anyone can choose to opt to, to not participate in electronic signatures. But as we're trying to go more and more paperless, the more electronic signatures we allow, the better off we are. All of you have been doing a great job with electronic signatures for your commission stipend. Since we're not meeting in person, you can't sign the paper in person. So we, that's like kind of was our first four way into this. We're now starting to get applications signed by electronic signatures. This will just simply create a policy, excuse me, to allow us to do that. And then the final one is a policy at our last meeting um, after closed session, commissioner, our chair McEntee uh, had suggested that we create a reserve fund for legal purposes. Um, after the committee had a discussion about it, they realized our general reserve can kind of serves that function but that they wanted to actually make a statement about the fact that we are going to take 
our authority very seriously. And if you and if you choose to ignore us, we will take legal action against you as one of our rights, if, if so needed or so desired by the commission. So this policy just kind of states that more clearly. Uh, the two new policies, staff will figure out where is best to stick them in, in our policy handbook. So you don't see numbers on those. We'll just figure out where is the smartest place to put them in and stick them into the policy handbook at the end of the day. So those are all of the policy amendments that uh, we had. You know, we, we hadn't met for almost over a year. Um, it's my anticipation that we probably won't meet again for a year. So we tend to take all the small things, add them all together, and when we get enough of them, I call the policy committee together and say, let's do an update to the handbook. And so that's why we had so many of them in, in one batch today. And I imagine in, in a year, or year and a half, we'll probably be doing this again. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. Any questions from the commission? Commissioner Rodoni? Yeah, thank you. Thanks for the work. Um, I had a question around the out of agency service agreement. I totally understand an emergency moving to that sort of decision making, but I'm a little nervous um, um, using that as the normal mechanism. And that's the way I'm reading it. It's not just emergencies. Out of service agreements can be approved by executive director. Um, I'm a little nervous with that because I think this board is much more sensitive to uh, the political win and the controversies that might come up than the executive director probably is. So if 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 we give this authority, I would ask that we all get notified of a of a out of service uh, agreement that might you might be deciding on just because we we have more uh, connection. In particular, the one tonight was very close to a controversial area, and in fact, I think some of that community would have showed up had they been aware of that uh, that Mo Valley sort of out of service agreement tonight. Um, it's a very sensitive area, as most of my district is, the septic changes and hookups to uh, sewer systems. And so just, just because it may not, you know, you just may not be aware of all those sorts of things. I'm a little uncomfortable with just giving you full authority without at least some notification so we could flag it for you at least. So. Yeah, I, I appreciate that, Commissioner. Um, the one thing I will ask Mala to correct me on this, if I send an email out to all the commissioners, that becomes a Brown Act issue or does that not become a brown act issue if i notify them of an osa just an fyi i received this and i'll be processing it is not a brown act issue but if you're seeking commissioners comments and they respond back with comments on it then that will be a brown act problem and so it's only if only if uh it is if we see each other's comments correct like if he if he bcc's the commission and somebody replies back to him only no, my, my concern is if you're trying to, if Jason, not that he would do this, but if Jason were trying to seek the commissioner's comments, and even if commissioners responded individually, he'd be seeking a collective concurrence of the commission in order to make his decision, which really needs to be done at an agendized meeting. Okay, I see that. I see that. So it would really just there. be an yeah. FYI, I received this, and I'll be processing it per the policies. Yeah. And just to try and I, I Commissioner Rodoni or Supervisor Rodoni, I'm sorry, I, I, I hear your concern. And I, I can only speak to myself, you know, maybe we, we modify this a little bit in some way if it makes you feel more comfortable. But I would definitely be checking in with whoever the supervisor is for the area. And even if they're not a LAFCO commissioner, I would still be checking in with the because I have a good enough relationship with all the supervisors to check in with them. I'd be checking in with any board members who may be in that area to say, hey, is there something I should be aware of? I'm not gonna be like just willy nilly doing doing this without checking in with people. I do hear the political wins and that's why like when we do the MSRs, I always check in with each of the people, each of the commissioners who are in that area to say, what do I need to know? Where are the landmines? What are the issues? So I do hear your concern, um, but I can guarantee you, I'm gonna be checking in, not with a majority of the board because I don't wanna have any Brown Act issues, um, but I would be checking in with, key commissioners and supervisors if they're not commissioners to say hey i've got this is there anything i should be aware of in this area to see if there is that political landmine because the last thing i want to do is step on one of those because i know how big yeah. and how terrible they can be and and i appreciate that as a practice but this is policy so it could be another executive director that doesn't yeah. follow your practice is yeah. my point no, so. very true that's true, that's true. And, and and i was just about to make the same comment dennis with with regard to uh, to Jason, you know, Jason 
is is good and would take care of that policy and not be an issue, but his replacement in five years or whatever may not be so sensitive. So wait, am I retiring in five years? Hold on. <laughs> uh, well, so the um, uh, just uh, um, reflecting the discussion from the policy committee, and, and I, I think these are I'm, I'm really glad to hear these comments. I think we should this is this is why we're discussing it um, was that uh, the universe of outside service agreements that would be in there would only be those that are uh, exempt from CEQA or that where there was a neg deck. So they, um, Mala, I don't know if you want to comment on um, how that limits them. So he couldn't just do an outside service agreement where there was, where it would be considered a project under CEQA. Is that, it, can you talk about what the universe of things that might be not exempt or where there wouldn't be a neg deck? Well, if it was an, if it was, I should clarify, if it was a neg, the neg deck would have to be determined by the lead agency. So if we were lead agency, which I can't imagine we would be, Jason wouldn't be able to do it because that would be something that the commission would have to take action on the CEQA document. So, so the type of things that you're routinely, it's what you're routinely seeing. These are usually exempt because it's a single parcel with uh, a home and then maybe an ADU or a JADU who, um, as you've seen, we've had um, numerous ones where the septic has failed or something has failed and they need to connect. So, and I wondered this actually when we were looking at this language. Um, so I, I read the, and a negative declaration was prepared to be not by LAFCO as a lead agency, Correct. by by the applicant. So I, I'm, I'm wondering if that would, maybe that should be clarified as well, if we decide to, if we decide to approve that piece of it. Um, uh, Commissioner Rodoni, uh, do you have any further questions on that or, or okay. Um, thank you. And then I'll move to Commissioner Kohler's questions and we can. Um... I was just going to point out under 4.9 D I, it says the executive officer may defer any decision on an out of agency service agreement application delegated to them pursuant to if they determine the request involves significant public controversy or maybe precedent setting. Um, so that sets it up. But if you did have an executive officer that didn't have the level of judgment that Jason has, um, that may be problematic. And it's also, um, even with Jason checking in with a supervisor, it may be that this is something in a city and uh, Jason does not have the relationships with all city council members. I mean, we wouldn't expect you to. There's a lot of them. Yeah. So I mean, one one suggestion I would have is we may want to change that wording and just say that if there is significant public controversy or precedent setting, um, the executive officer shall defer any decision. Or one option, as I think uh, Supervisor Rodoni was mentioning. Maybe it would be better to leave this to emergencies, um, just mm -hmm. so that. I mean, how many of these actually come up? Other than the emergency ones that have to be acted on right away. I've been on this since 2019. I think I've only seen this one. Now I know Dennis has been on this since the beginning of time, <laughs> so he probably um, <laughs> knows that there are more than this. But would it be that difficult if you just left it to emergencies? Um, but um, I'm just throwing that out there yeah. because I thought this was all fine, but um, didn't really think about, you know, there can be ones that you may not even have any idea that it could be significant. Yeah, and I, I, I totally hear that and totally agree with what you're saying. One of the things to keep in mind, however, is whatever agency is being connected with the OSA has to be agreeing to get connected. So this has had review from their board. So like in this case, Sashi already had a discussion at Mill Valley about the fact that this was getting connected. So there is a public discourse that is occurring through whatever agency. Now in this case for 11 Brighton, it was a city that was doing it. In most cases, this is probably going to be a sanitary or water district that's having it. So it might not get the same public review but it is still going through a public review of that side of things. The OSAs, you know, don't get the same level of public review because they're emergencies, but just generic OSAs 
will always get a public review from the agency that's connecting you because that agency has to give approvals. Well, they, so um, they and they and they have to be. Do they have to be the applicant then? Yes, and they have to be the applicant. So okay, so this that's will important. Always be going through an agency. So I, if if you don't like, and I get the argument like, hey, I'm responsible. Maybe the next person isn't. You can at least rely on the fact that whatever is occurring is going to be occurring through some government body that is local to that area because it, they're the ones that have to do the OSA through their body approval and they have to be the applicant. It's not like John who was here earlier, he was a representative, but technically speaking, it was Mill Valley that was the applicant. So it is getting that level yeah. of review. I don't know, Commissioner or Supervisor Rodoni, if that satisfies your needs or not, um, but I'm happy if we want to amend it to just be emergency, but whatever the direction the commission wants to go, I'm happy with doing it. This was just an option for you if you wanted to take it. Yeah, um, just to, to another question on that. So um, Mala, if we, uh, let's say we have this policy in place and um, whatever executive officer, Jason or someone else um, approves something and um, to Commissioner Rodoni's concerns was unaware of, uh, uh, you know, that, that this was going to be a controversial issue um, and thought it was going to be routine. And it did go through the, you know, whatever the agency was before, but, uh, you know, it was a small sanitary, you know, a, a district that, um, you know, the neighborhood wasn't totally tuned into. And then it, you know, was actually a controversial thing. So it, one of the things we said at the policy committee um, was that um, not only would the executive officer report out on that at the next commission meeting, but they would also have to provide any just, you know, justification for why they did so. Uh, would there be any remedy by the commission if they felt that that was done in error at that Not point? by the commission. It would be a final decision. There is okay. a process for reconsideration, but that would be by the applicant, not by the commission or a member of the public, unless you built that into the policy. Okay, so if so, if there's so if there is a if the executive officer makes a mistake there, there's kind of no going back. But there is, you know, to Jason's point, uh, an outside agent, out of agency service agreement application must come from an agency that has already had a public meeting on that. And I wonder if maybe we could even just clarify that in here so that people are not confused, um, because that is that this, this policy presumes that to be true. So if we have, if we have that language in there, that might provide some comfort, but um, well, so, so let's, let's, um, let's uh, stop there and take public, any public comment. And then if there's no public comment, we can come back and, and deliberate on this. I, I wanna know what, how, what everybody thinks about that. Is there any public comment on this issue? Just so you're aware, all the members of the public have now left our meeting. Okay. So seeing no uh, member of the public who wishes to comment, we'll close the public comment and bring it back to the commission for deliberation. Um, so I guess maybe I'll just start with, um, uh, does anyone have any concerns about any of, of the other amendments so that we uh, can discuss that? No, okay. So then let's just focus on this one. Um, what's the commission's feeling on, um, do we want to just have the executive officer do emergency proposals or do we want to add these other uh, exempt proposals and potentially add some clarifying language on the, you know, that we're presuming that it's already gone through that process on the agency side and that a negative declaration was prepared by them as the lead agency and not us. Vice Chair Caius. Yeah, I'd just like to make a procedural uh, suggestion on this. Rather than us trying to come up with wording and language and whatever tonight, um, why don't we pass this, since we apparently agree with all the other items, pass these items, approve them with everything except the one that we're talking about. And then, you know, the, uh, the procedure committee go back and reword this and consider other things and come up with a, you know, mm -hmm. another revision uh, for our next meeting in two months. That can make a difference in two months. Yeah. That's trying to, you know, analyze yeah. and construct this. No, tonight. no, I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to have us, I'm not going to have us uh, worst fits on the dice. I always, I always hate that. But I, what I, what I want to hear is, do you want to do this at all? So um, if we want to do it with those with with all that that I that I described and having the, the words actually be, uh, you know, written so that we can see them from a directional standpoint, is everyone comfortable if if we did it that way, which would be have this policy in place, allowing the executive officer to do out of agency service agreements 
only if they're exempt or if a neg deck was pre prepared by the agency. This is presuming the, the applicant is the agency. It's already gone through a public hearing on that front. Um, are you comfortable with having that that if it's if all the wording has been vetted properly. I guess for me, I would be comfortable with that, assuming that we had the wording all vetted and people, everyone agreed to the, the wording and the parameters. Yeah. Commissioner Moody. Yeah, any any time that we can streamline, uh, you know, process so that things get done, I'm, I'm for it. So if there's some way we can get the language to, uh, satisfy Dennis. So if there's some mechanism, some trigger where you can, uh, uh, individual commissioner could pull the plug, so to speak, that might be, you know, so let, I think you could probably work that out in a separate policy dis discussion if we pull it for now and then, um, you know, work on it in the next couple of months. Thank you, Commissioner Moody. Uh, commissioner Rodoni, what are your feelings on, given all those clarifications, what would yeah, you I think like I think see? it I think the clarifications have been helpful. I do think going back sending it back to committee to look at some of these other ideas to look at this for maybe from two perspectives, one the emergency proposals and then other proposals and maybe come back with some suggestions about how to deal with each so that okay. you actually separate emergencies from the run of the mill um, out of service, out of agency service agreements and, and make proposals for both, but then we could choose if we wanna go one way or the other. Okay, so just to, I just wanna clarify what your concerns are. Um, I, 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 what I understood it to be was that, that um, the executive officer may not be aware of some of the, you know, the issues in that particular area. So uh, if, if um, yeah. From a it, it, point, of, yeah. point of view of transparency, it's just yeah. you can't count on all our smaller agencies being able to distribute it to the public to get enough notice. You know, so I think it's our responsibility to make sure that we we, we look after that and that'd be much more transparent by proving something like mm -hmm. this. And so that I don't know what that process is, but just to make sure that that we try and help that process along and not and not just depend on the one agency that has a pretty small audience sometimes and their agenda is not normally followed where ours might be and our, our system might be, just might be helpful. So okay. I trust the, trust the committee can do some cleanup and come back with something. Okay, uh, Commissioner Moody and then Commissioner Kohler. Just didn't get my hand pulled down here. Uh -huh. I, I think we're fine and we're ready to move on here. Okay. Uh, well, uh, although although I, I am I am hearing two different points of view here. It can I just add like, what okay. I'd yeah. like to say is yeah, that please. I agree with Commissioner Rodoni. Is I think, and I like what Vice Chair Caius said. Let's approve this without this piece. Take it back to your committee, and do it two ways. One is just showing emergency separate of the delegations purely for being for emergencies. And I frankly don't know how emergencies are defined, something within 24 hours or something like that. Then having the second part of it very separate, not mixed in with the emergency piece of where you're talking about where you would want to delegate the non-emergency OSAs to the executive officer and I think here, you know, you have heard the discussion here, bringing it back. And my personal opinion is it might be fine to give us the option the next time it comes up to maybe just say, okay, we're fine with the emergencies. It takes too much judgment for an executive officer to decide where something is controversial or precedent setting given that you're dealing with some smaller agencies, they may not have the breath to do the kind of work. So if it's two separate ways of doing it, clearly emergencies, those are all good. And then having this separate discussion of where you'd like to delegate uh, where it's non-emergencies. And then we can look at that, but I think you can go back to your committee and relay some of what I think Commissioner Rodoni has really laid out that frankly, I hadn't thought of. 
Thank you, Commissioner Kohler. So just to recapitulate here, uh, I am hearing a split. I'm hearing that uh, I heard from two commissioners that are comfortable with having an executive officer do uh, a limited universe, uh, ha have judgment on a limited universe of out, out of agency service agreements that they could approve. And I'm hearing two that have concerns and feel like it would be better if that those um, would come through the commission. So, um, so if I were to go back to the policy com committee and we were to work on it, we would not have uh, equi you know, we, we, we have kind of, you know, equivocal direction from the commission. Um, so I, I if um, it, it sounds like uh, maybe the commission just wants more time to think about this, um, but uh, um, it, 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 I'm, I'm definitely hearing two points of view. So if we don't have consensus on where we want to go with this, um, it seems like the, the answer would be to just approve the emergency piece of it and then um, decide we want to take up the other piece either, you know, the next time the policy committee meets or, or at some other time, because um, it doesn't sound like we have agreement on that part. Is, is, there, is, is there any, is, does anyone want to go, does anyone want to go the other way so that we, had, we do have a consensus one way or, um, or do we, or do we still kind of remain? Uh, Commissioner Loder, I don't know, you haven't spoken. Is there any, do you have any thoughts on, outs, on, the, on this piece? Um, I kind of think that, that what you're suggesting is probably the best take the part that you're uh, uh, ha happy with and then the other carry it over. Okay, so um, so this would be my proposal then. So currently in the handbook, um, emergency proposals are uh, can be approved by the chair and you can see that is, um, is redlined 4.9H. Um, what we could do is we could just strike this whole um, 4.9D because we don't have consensus on that. And we could um, uh, amend 4.9H to Marin Lafco authorizes the executive officer. Uh, and then in that policy, it says Marin Lafco shall ratify the chair's determination at the next regularly scheduled meeting. Um, so we could, that would take care of the emergency, uh, the emergency out of service agreements it seems like that's not controversial. Everybody's okay with, with the executive officer handling that. Um, and then the other piece, if there's some interest in the commission in, in massaging this and pursuing um, you know, conditions under which the executive officer could, could approve other non-emergency out of service agreements, we can, we can have the policy commission uh, committee rather uh, meet and work on that. But to, to me, I'm, I'm not hearing a strong push for you know, we should figure that out. I, I, you know, I heard a couple people saying, you know, it'd be nice to kind of streamline things, but if there are enough concerns, maybe we just let, let that let that lie and we can take that up at another time. If, if. does that sound okay to everybody? Um, Mala, what are your thoughts? I think that makes sense. I that's what I've typically seen is the emergency power given to the executive officer. Okay, so then um, what I'm going to propose is that we just take that whole 4.9D out and then um, we would basically add back 4.9H and just change the word uh, chair to exec uh, executive officer. There are two places where it says, so it would be Marin Lafco authorizes the executive officer to approve a city, town, or special district's request, uh, dot, 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 and then Marin Lafco shall ratify so then, uh, Mala, then we, you can leave that in as well. Okay, then ratify the executive officer's determination. So we just substitute the word executive officer for chair in 4.9H and leave it, leave it in as it is, which is what's there now. Okay, um, would, if there's no further deliberation on that, um, would anyone like to make a motion with that amendment? I just say I might have made a motion, but I got lost in all those. I'm I'm okay. looking at the thing right here. I'm trying to keep track of the 4.9 E's and D's and yeah, the, yeah, the leave outs and the executive officer. And I'm a pretty smart guy, I think. But gosh, <laughs> you lost me. Okay, so, um, let me let me say let me say that again. So um, 4.9 D, that whole section that we just talked about about outside service agreements, um, took. If you go down a couple there, it says 4.9 H and it's redlined out. 
So that new section was intended to take that section that's red line out and add some stuff to it. So instead of doing that, we'll leave 4.9H in because that's in there right now. That's in our policy right now. So we won't add that new thing in and we will just leave the health and safety emergency approval in, but make it the executive officer who is authorized to do that and not the chair. And just so there would only be two, the, the word changing, uh, it would like that red line would disappear, it would come back as black, and there would be two, two things red lined, the words, you know, the words chair in, in that, those two sentences there. And that whole section we just read would be gone or would not be added in. Is everybody tracking with that? I understand that this is, um, it's, it, it, seems, it seems confusing, but it's basically not adding something <laughs> instead of adding. Okay, does that make sense, um, Vice Chair Kais? I know it's a long, it's, it's, it's the end of the night too. It makes sense to me. I'll just restate it just to be clear. So you're taking all that stuff out in red, right? Yep. Yeah, that what, what we've got and on screen then, there. And where you redlined out 4.9 H health and safety emergency approval, it would instead it would be back in, but it would say Marin Lasco authorizes the executive officer to approve a city, town, or special district request. Anyway, that part right there. Would it be yeah. helpful if we instead shared the doc? I have the word doc up, Jason. If you want to take your share screen down, I can put the document up and I'll just show the commission what that looks like really quickly so that we have a little more clarity. Yep, go ahead. Can I just offer a very simple solution so we can move forward tonight? I would be, I would gladly make a motion to to uh, support approval of all of the changes. Not that section, Olivia, sorry. Not, I know. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to find my um, there it is. track yeah. changes. That's the problem that I'm working with now, but it's hidden by the bar. Oh, I see what you mean. Yep. Yeah. Under review. It's under yep. review. Yeah. Okay. So I was about to say, I would, I would gladly make a motion to support approving all the changes that are made up to, but not including anything in 4.9. And that 4.9 can be redone and brought back to the commission at a later date. So all the uh, changes that are in 4.9, E, D, C, H, and whatever can be reviewed and, and brought back to us later. But all the items prior to 4.9 that we agree on, we make a motion to approve. Uh, so if you, um, she just made that change. So um, the, the change that would come back is what you, she just showed there. So it's going to just be lining out those two words. So I think it actually is, is, is not, it's minor enough to not really need to come back that 4.9 H change. So you can see it right there. Maybe Four. Olivia can move down to there because it's way at the bottom. Nobody can read it. I, yeah. I can't read anything that's on the screen now. The, the granularity is such that I can't see any of that. Can you see now, Lou, 4.9H down? Okay, actually, 4.9H on my lap, on my uh, tablet. Okay, and you might not see the red line because if you're looking at it on an iPad, it won't show you. So why don't we do this? Um, I could second, um, Lose motion with one friendly amendment. Okay. And that is the change made to 4.9 H to delegate emergencies to the executive officer instead of the chair. Lou, would you be willing to take that friendly amendment? It's sure, I would do, I would be willing to do that, Barbara. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the the uh, motion was made by Vice Chair Caius and seconded by Commissioner Kohler. So that would be to approve all the policy handbook changes with the amendment of the the, the new section 4.9D is stricken. The old section 4.9H is uh, is left standing with those two with those two changes of the replacing the word chair with executive officer. Um, is 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 the yes. is the motion on the table? Um, okay, Olivia, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Radoni. Aye. Commissioner Kohler. Aye. 
Commissioner Moody. Aye. Commissioner Loader. Aye. Vice Chair Caius. Aye. Chairman McEntee. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks for working that through all. Um, we've got, and I, I'm so sorry, we've got a little bit more to go and we do have a closed session. So we're going to try to, we'll try to move this along. Um, the next item is item number 10, discussion of April LAFCO commission meeting and whether to meet in person. Jason. Yes, you're muted. Sorry, I need to mute myself there. Um, so this is purely a chance for the commission to have a discussion about its thoughts on, do we want to return to in-person meetings? at the next uh, LAFCO meeting in April, based on, you know, clearly we will continue to monitor COVID situations and what's going on. Some agencies are starting to come back, others are still remaining as virtual only, um, or do we want to try and come back and do a hybrid model? Um, I'm, I'm Personally, I'm not as big of a fan of the hybrid model. Uh, there's a lot of extra work that goes into staff for the number of people that attend, I'm not sure it's there. Um, so I, I will simply leave it to the commission to discuss about how, how much do we want to try and bring ourselves back together or do we want to stay virtually at this point? Okay, uh, is there any public comment on this item? Um, looks like there are no members of the public in attendance and it doesn't look like there are any emails. So we'll close public comment and bring it back for uh, questions of deliberation. Commissioner Kohler. Um, I'm just wondering, um, you know, MCE is not talking about going back in person for a while and that's where we've met. So nobody is in that building. So unless you, and I sit on MCE, um, I don't think that building will be an option. So I'm fine with going back in person um, if we were to do so, because I think we can easily social distance. Very few people come to our meetings. Um, unlike city council meetings where in Fairfax, you might have 40 to 100 people. It's very difficult to social distance. But I think the question is, where would we meet? Because I do not think MC, well, Jason's got his finger up. Yeah, that is a concern of mine as well as to where we meet. Um, the other thing I will add is hopefully at our April meeting and I'm crossing my fingers that Jaron's about to, ready to get completed with uh, his West Marin MSR. We will also have the West Marin MSR in front of us. So we may end up having members of the public show up. Although to the degree that we are able to legally continue to do a virtual meeting, perhaps having a West Marin public hearing virtually might make it a lot easier for those folks to, sh to show up and attend rather than having to drive all the way to somewhere where we could, where that's yeah. large enough for us to social distance and have our meetings. There are other options out there. We have had discussions with the Board of Supervisors. They're willing to let us use the room, although they are a little costly in, in doing it. And that's kind of my concern. If we go someplace other than MCE, we pay a fee for MCE, but most other places are a little more expensive. So it's really a, a question of how much money do we want to spend to go somewhere else if we have this as, our, as an option. Mala, if, if by the time the April meeting rolls around, um, we do not legally have the option to do a virtual meeting and we have decided to do that, um, what would happen? No, we would have to meet in person. If the state of emergency, if the governor doesn't extend the state of emergency, then even if you decided to meet virtually, um, we would need to meet in person. The only other option would, would be to post, you know, if you were if you were in your homes, you, we'd have to list your address and make it right. available to the public, which I don't okay. think you want to do. So, I, so we, we I can't- I just want to yeah. suggest that um, you may be able to use the Fairfax uh, Women's Club Mm -hmm. um, we are set up for hybrid, but, um, and if you wanted to film it, you could have CM San, um, come, uh, I don't know how much we would charge for use of that, but if you were to use, um, for the West Marin MSR, it would be close for people. So, um, if a lot of people showed up, it will be very difficult to social distance and it's very difficult to control people in that room. But well, um, you know what, if, if the emergency order is over, that's also waived well, those requirements. I've checked with our attorney who's also BBK and because we have to talk about it in Fairfax. And she said, there is a little bit of a catch the way it's written 
if you're able to maintain social distancing and if the county public health officer comes out with something about maintaining social distancing, um, there may be, you may continue in her opinion, at least for us, because we get a lot of people, we may be able to continue virtually. But I think for LAFCO, it would be harder to make that argument because even if a lot of people show up, you're not gonna have 40 people. Okay, um, so the it, it, it sounds to me like um, you know there there there's a, some upside to having a virtual meeting uh, because it would potentially allow more people from West Brim, which is such a, a broadly dispersed area, to participate. Um, but that said, we may not have the option. Uh, is that correct, Mala? So what's the they kind of wondering like what the value of us sort of making a call on virtual or not is if we may not have that option so we, we could say let's do, let's plan on doing april virtual um unless unless that's not allowed is that jason yeah that, that's what i was going to say is clearly if it's not allowed we're not going to do it the question is if it is allowed do we want to continue to do it okay uh, uh, uh any anybody uh, feel strongly that we should or shouldn't I was going to ask Marla yeah. whether we ha we still have to provide remote access for the public, right? Under that's AB three sixty one or whatever it is. That's if we're if we're meeting remotely like this. If we continue to re meet meet remotely, then we would have this Zoom option. Meaning, no, if I, we're in I person, we don't. We went we're not public. Yeah. I thought if we went public, we had to have that option too under. No, I mean I think some agencies are um, maybe the board is meeting in the chambers, but they're not allowing the public in and they're mm -hmm. using AB 361 and they're providing the Zoom option. But if we're just completely going back to the old okay. way, then we could not the, really um, need to have Zoom. Yeah, and, and the other thing that we have done um, on MSRs like this is we could have the meeting in West Marin, um, but we would, you know, of course, West Marin is very dispersed. So um, we could, because it's, focused on that, we could choose to have our commission meeting in the place that it is covering. So that is an, an option for a physical location. Um, uh, what does the commission think about? Let's just go ahead and say um, we'll do it virtually unless we are not legally allowed to do so. Okay, it's looking like everybody likes that. And this is just a, a, a giving direction, right? Jason, do you need a motion? No, I just I just need direction and Commissioner Kohler, if you can send the information about that meeting spot to Olivia, we can look into it in case we don't have a virtual availability to us. Yeah, I would just um, suggest to you, Olivia, you've communicated with our clerk and um, she can probably, if it's not her, um, but I, I think that would be an option that would be close to people in West Marin because unless we do it at Dennis's house, I don't think there's any place <laughs> large enough in West Marin. The, the central- Some place in Bolinas, I, I don't know, or you know, but that maybe again, that's not very central. Like you know, some, some it would have to be someplace- Well, the San Geronimo Community Center is not very large. Rancho Nicasio in the back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Right. So okay. anyway- um, it So looks if anyone like has any thoughts on venue- Yeah, um, we might be able to find yeah. something in Point Ray Station. If we yep. decide to meet out there, I, yep. I would re remind all the commissioners it's a long ride home after a two and a half hour meeting, and you'll know why I'm grouchy the next day. I'm just going <laughs> to say, <laughs> those of us who live in Southern Marin, you know, might want to rent a helicopter to get there and back, <laughs> given traffic at that time of the day and the distance. But yeah, but uh, you know, we we all we all want to provide maximal access to the public. I think that's I'm, I'm hearing Great. that from everybody. Yeah, so um, we'll we'll we'll. Uh, um, if we do, uh, we are required at that point to have a physical location. Um, Jason will rely on you to reach out to these couple of commissioners that have um, some some ideas, and we'll 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 accommodate with that. And and if we are going to do a physical location that's not MCE, um, if staff could uh, arrange that with more than the usual amount of notice, so that we can assess what commissioners are going to be able to attend if we do a, a different location. Um, and what yeah, people's we, constraints we'll are. We'll do our best to try and figure out locations over the next uh, couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. Very good. All right. So we'll move on to item number 11, uh, authorize the executive officer to enter in, into an agreement with Elisa Schiffman for bookkeeping services. Jason. Yeah. So uh, Elisa Schiffman has been doing our bookkeeping services for longer than I've been with LAFCO. <coughs> um, she does excellent work. And I, 
I want to say that her services are more than really just bookkeeping. We, we've always classified it as bookkeeping, but she's really doing a lot more than that. If you look at the contract, we list a whole bunch of things that she does for us. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll keep it short and say she does a lot of things for us. Um, her contract is set to expire at the end of the current fiscal year. One of the things that I did when I came on board was try and A, try and get multiple year contracts with our vendors because we can generally get a better deal and you know we know what our rates are to help with our budget, but also B, have all of our items line up with our budget. Um, so when, if there's gonna be increases, we know about it and the budget committee can plan for it. So this is one of two agreements that are coming up this year. The other one's gonna be for our IT services but wasn't able to get that contract ready for tonight. So we'll probably bring it back at the April meeting. So I like to bring these things out early, let you have a discussion about them. Um, you know, as with her current contract, there's a small increase each year. Um, to be fair, I think her, her increase is less than um, inflation is these days. So I'm actually happy that we're getting the rate that we're getting. Um, I would not have survived all of the transition from the county HR payroll system without her. Um, and I would like to re retain her services for another three years. Uh, we all, as of course, always have the ability to um, end the services if for some reason she stops performing to the level that we expect of her, but I don't see that happening. Um, we, one final note is we do use the BBK template uh, agreement that they gave us. So the only thing that's in there that, that has, is really changing from that template agreement is, is the stuff that, that they tell us to fill in like her name and what services she's providing. So. The rest of it is simply the template letter agreement uh, from BBK. Very good. Uh, any questions from the commission? Seeing none, any, are there any public comments? Uh, there seems to be no public. So we'll close the public comment and bring it back to the commission for a motion. I'll move that item. Authorize the executive officer to enter into an agreement with Alyssa Shipman for bookkeeping services. I'll second. Moved by Commissioner Kohler, seconded by Vice Chair Caius. Olivia, please call the roll. Commissioner Radoni. Aye. Commissioner Kohler. Aye. Commissioner Moody. Aye. Commissioner Loader. Sadie. Right. Right. You're muted, yeah. Commissioner Loader. Yes, aye. Thank you. Vice Chair Caius. He said I was just a little quiet. Oh, okay, Chairman McEntee. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you very much. We will now move to the executive officer report. Okay, as I always do, I'll do my uh, speed run through these uh, various items. Um, so first one is budget update. We, uh, seven months in, you should be about spending 58% of your budget. We've only spent 48% of our budget. So we are coming in under budget. That's partly due to us continuing to have line items for conferences and things like that. And since those aren't really, haven't really been occurring, uh, we are a little bit under budget, which is good to see. Um, this budget also now includes the adjustments that were made at the last commission meeting for our professional services uh, increase and our rent storage, which is to do the big uh, scanning system that we actually got started today. Uh, we, they finally got all of our stuff and they started test scanning some documents today for us. So. We are doing good on budget items. Um, the next item is current and pending proposals. Uh, we had four of them today. We currently have none in the queue, um, which is good, although we anticipate getting one or two more. Whether or not we get them in time for them to be on the next commission meeting is yet to be seen, but I know we had a call today and it looks like we're getting close to getting one submitted, so we might see one at the next meeting. If not, you might actually get a small reprieve from, open, from uh, public hearing uh, applications at the next meeting. Um, moving on to the uh, next one is, um, well, I wanted to give you an update on Marin City incorporation process. You may remember you authorized me to work with an organizing committee <coughs> to help uh, figure out how to see if it was fiscally possible for Marin City to incorporate. Um, there have been, I've been spending some time with the organizing committee. The organizing committee has also been working with the, C, uh, the, M, the uh, CSD for Marin City. Uh, as well. Uh, the CSD has made a request of the organizing committee to halt all things. They had a lot of things they wanted to discuss internally. Um, and so the organizing committee has stopped. The CSD has also asked LAFCO to stop doing its thing, which we of course naturally have done. 
Uh, but with this, the organizing committee decided that they were going to disband themselves. Um, so I don't see this moving forward anytime soon. Uh, if it ever does come back, I'll bring it back to the commission for further discussions. Uh, but just wanted to let you know that we did put work in. We were about ready to issue an RFP, and that's when the CSD said, stop what you're doing. And we, of course, don't want to go against their wishes. So we did. Um, the final item on the, or I'm sorry, the, the next report is our committee assignments. Um, you, uh, you, you have them in there. This is at the discretion of the chair. There was one thing, uh, um, and since Commissioner um, Murray is not here, I will bring up, um, we now have duck information um, or what, what areas are, can be defined as disadvantaged in incorporated communities. We had an ad hoc committee the last time it met, it, it disbanded, it did its job, but one of its recommendations was the possibility of revisiting this one when the new census data came out and ducks kind of get redefined again um, or what areas are ducks get redefined. So one question I have for the commission tonight that, that I would want a, you can have a very quick discussion on, we're not going to do any approvals tonight is, do we want to have that duck committee come back and assign people to it? The, pol the Marine Policy Handbook uh, states that in order for a, an ad hoc committee to be created, the commission has to approve it. It's not on tonight's agenda. So if there's some general acceptance that you want to see it done, let us know and we can bring it to our April meeting to have a, a formal a formation of the ad hoc. At that point, we can appoint who serves on it, give it its parameters and uh, and do that. But before I bring it to the committee, to the commission, just wanted to see if there was a general consensus that, yeah, that's a good idea. Let's bring it, let's redo the ad hoc committee and have them have it, you know, what I call the once in a decade discussion of what is a duck and, uh, what we're going to do with them and, and because it's an ad hoc it would be a, a a it would it would do it would consider that and then it would would end it wouldn't be a standing committee correct yep okay is there is there uh, an interest in that since we have the census data it seems like that that's uh, not a bad exploration to have okay i'm seeing nodding hands anybody opposed to that okay seeing none we'll, we'll go ahead staff will put something together for the next meeting uh for for creating a duck ad hoc uh with some parameters and stuff around it um, the final item on the agenda is the LAFCO workshop. Thank you all. You all were very quick in responding to our doodle poll. We now have it scheduled for Wednesday, July 27th. We haven't done much planning beyond the date, and it's going to be that morning. Um, there's still a lot of planning to do in it, but just make sure it's on your calendars. Um, and as time gets closer, we will give you updates. What we are planning to do, just so you're aware, at the June meeting is uh, Jaron's going to do a very quick, like, Get you get your brain start priming towards the discussion for the workshop so you're not coming into the workshop cold but that you have some things and some questions that we're going to tell you here are questions for you to be thinking about so when we get to the workshop you're prepared to start having a, a good deep dive discussion into what we're trying to do so we can make the workshop as meaningful as possible um, and make it useful for for both all for all of you all of our member agencies and for staff as we start to look towards what does round uh, six of MSR look like here in Marin County. Um, and then one final thing that, or two final things just to give you a reminder is Forum 700s are due. Please make sure you're turning them in. For all of you who serve on another agency, just make sure you list LAFCO as a other agency on your thing and you you are covered. If you forget to do that, you're going to have to do the entire form all over again for, form, for LAFCO. So just make sure it's there. Commissioner Loader, make sure you're working with Olivia to make sure you get your form in this year. Um, and then for those of you that have AB1234 trainings to do, those are every other year. So if this is your year to do them, you normally do them once again for all of you, except for Commissioner Loader, you're doing them through your primary agency. If you can just make sure you get a copy of the certificate you get when you complete that form to Olivia, so we have a copy of it as well. Um, your training with them serves as your training with us, so we don't have to do anything. Commissioner Loader, I think you did one last year, so you, you don't have to worry about it this year, but Olivia will work with you if you need to. Um, and then one final just thing, I'm starting to put together my self-review at our April meeting. We always do the closed session where you guys have a discussion about how great you think I am. Um, and so that'll be at our April meeting. Uh, you'll have a closed session about that. With that, that ex exhausts my executive officer's report at this time. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments from the commission? A little applause there. Um, are there any comments from the public? And seeing none, we'll close public comment on that. 
Um, on the uh, just a note on the on the self review, um, you know, we'll have the closed session, so we'll be able to discuss whether or not we want to do the survey again, or whether we just want to um, collect some comments. Okay, good. So seeing uh, seeing no other uh, comments, there um, we will go ahead and adjourn to closed session. Um, to consider anticipated litigation. And then we will pop back into this to just do quickly commissioner announcements and requests, and then we'll do the adjournment. Olivia, do you wanna help guide everybody in what they need to do next? Yeah, you should have received a separate email from me that was also um, had the link that, from Mala. Um, I think I sent it out on Monday, although I, I could be incorrect about that. But if you have trouble finding the link, just send me an email and I'll forward that email to you. Um, if you I, could you just forward it right now to everybody <laughs> i didn't get it some of your stuff is getting caught hmm give me a second yeah i'll re-forward it to everyone right now thank you okay so she's going to forward it and everybody just go ahead and leave this meeting and come into that one thank you very much thank you everyone we are back in open session and there was no reportable action We'll now move to commissioner announcements and requests. Are there any announcements or requests from anyone on the commission? Seeing none, we will go ahead and adjourn to the next meeting, which will be our next regular meeting will be April 14th, 2022 at 7 p.m. Thank you very much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.